much time into five blind, but it was obvious to me at least that like if he just like practiced five blind a little bit, he could like destroy. Right. Um, and that's what happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and here we are. Um, yeah. So I was like, I was I was getting like kind of world class at five blind, but I was also like mentally preparing myself just to be destroyed, have my dreams destroyed in that event specifically because right. I knew Stanley was just right. like just freakishly good. Um, but also like multi blind has always been like definitely my favorite event five blind was like close second for a long time but just multi-blind multi -blind has always been my number one my baby and it yeah after getting my hopes crushed in five blind it became even more so that yeah but then yeah. yeah later that year after i got the north american record in five blind um and i started taking multi-blind a lot more seriously because there was a lot of stuff that happened that year, actually. That was 2018, I think. And I went to my first Nats that year. Stanley got world record in five blind for the first time at that Nats. And I won. That was my first Nats, and I won uh, multi-blind there, beating Mark Boynowski. And that was, like, huge for me because he was... Right. Like, Mark he, got, the he, was the one who, he was the one who beat Mascow's world record, which was, like, getting into cubing. That was, like by far the biggest inspiration to me just mascot's world record yeah. and it was record for like over five years it was like the most legendary thing and mark was the one to beat it and then i beat that him at awesome. nets and that was like it took off that like was a huge motivation and then i got a north american record 42 out of 42 like a few months later and then yeah it was i just like basically only focused on multi-blind for like the rest of my queuing career maybe not only but like very largely multi-blind and it was like <clears throat> that was like a november or october or something when i got that multi-blind nar and then like the next six months was like massive multi-blind improvement for me just like i that i did not expect and i like got i, I basically went from like being able to barely sub hour 46 to being able to sub hour 60 plus in like six months and holy crap okay like nobody that's huge until then, nobody had, like, sub-houred anything bigger than, yeah. like, 52. Yeah. So I had, like, this burst of improvement, and then it, it kind of, uh, yeah, that led to me getting the world record, like, the next year in May, I think. So, yeah, it's been, like, just over two years now Damn. since okay. I got my first world record. And that was 50 out of 52. And then uh, I got, like, a I got 351 out of 54s, and then I finally beat my own record with 53 out of 57, like, October later that year, and then the next month, I beat it with 59 out of 60. Well, I right. beat it with 56 out of 60, and then the next attempt, 59 out of 60 at the same comp, and then I did 58 out of 60 on the third attempt. Yeah, that that, that was kind of kind of the, the semi-legendary comp, right, where you got, like, a mean that was higher than the current world record or something? Well, yeah, the mean I got was 56 points, and the world record before that comp was 49 points. <laughs> like, the world record single that's before so that comp was my that's 49 so points, and then I got a 56-point mean. Oh, so that's, man. like, by far the best I've ever performed in a comp ever. I usually go, like, a year without getting a result I'm really happy with in a comp, but that comp was, like, insane. I don't know how I even did that. Okay. I was just, okay. like, grinding... I was grinding 60 cube attempts at home, like, every single day, doing them as safe as I could, and I got... I got something like a 53 average of 12 doing that before that comp. So getting a 56 mean, it like tied my PB multi-blind mean. So that was really insane. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I dude, oh goodness, that's freaking sick. I almost want to hit the e-break for a second because there's a huge part of me that just wants to dive on that. Just, but I'm like, I want to like zoom this out. rambled a little bit. So no, dude. I understand. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I just know that. I will dive on this, um, and then we'll <laughs> like we'll 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 do part six without without the first um with without the yeah. first things that are before six. So let me, but you 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 do kind of raise an interesting point, which is that if people you know if there'd been time, if there'd been competitions, it's possible that you might not still hold the world record. And I almost want to throw a framing of this conversation at you and see how you see how you respond to it. Um, which is that, so currently you, you have the top 10 out of 11 uh, best results in the world for multi, right? So I would describe the last few years as a period, of, even if we ignore coronavirus, which is obviously messed around comps, like as just a period of like you like 
dominating the multi-blind event, right? Um, and when it feels like we're now like a little bit, you know, I, you, you, you know, I'm not like blowing smoke up your ass or anything like we're th these, these are just mathematical That's facts. Fair. Um, yeah. And, and it feels like we're coming into a period now where there are other people attempting and sub houring 60 or more cubes. Like the, obviously Rohes is the big one. People will know of this, um, a guy, oh, I, I cannot, I'm so sorry to the Polish community. I don't, I can't pronounce his name, but, uh, uh Kishtof, Kishtof, I think yes, it's... thank you. Yeah, yeah. Kishtof, I yeah. think is how you pronounce it. He's he's grinding out also, 60 cubers, yeah. There's two Polish dudes, actually. Kishtof is one of them. I don't think Adrian Debski is practicing much lately, but he he got like 56 out of 60, I think, like yeah. a year ago or Is that something like that. Yeah. Okay, um, damn. damn. And also... Well, Gregory Alexiev, Russian guy, he mm. got 53 out of 53, but then he, like, he's been really off and on practicing for a long time. Like, mm -hmm. he will practice multi-blind for, like, a few months and then stop for, like, a year, and that's, like, the normal, normal for him. So, Standard, uh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And it's kind of similar with Adrian, too. And Adrian, Adrian, I, to be honest, just, like, have, like, he's always had, like, pretty close uh, skill level to me, I would say, but... I mean, at least according to him saying what he does at home, but obviously you can't really verify any of it, but his comp performance has always been, like... <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, that's the problem for him. Like, if you look at his WCA results, it's always, like... Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's I, don't know, I don't know how to, like, say it, like, lightly, <laughs> but he he chokes really hard every single comp. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll... he'll like, like, I think the last occurrence of that like he basically had already done 56 at a 60 sub hour according to him at home and then he tried to safety 49 at comp and he got like a 43 out of 49 or something damn and and hit the hour i think or Dude, something like that that's wild that is wild so yeah okay really bad case of comp nerves Dude, and, and comp nerves feels like, I, I mean, the, the other thing I sent you in, in Discord is like the mental game of multi-blind and that almost feels like I would love to just that I'm pretty sure that's going to be a different conversation. I would love to like deep dive on that as well though, because it's such a yeah. real thing. Um, but so like, yeah, there's a lot I could say about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no doubt. Um, do, do, do you think it's fair to say that we're moving from an era of like sig dominance to like multi-blind competitiveness again? Um, um, it's hard for me to say about Kristoff because, um, I also don't know much about like how he performs in comp mm. and like what a lot of people don't realize is like when somebody is like getting like decent results occasionally on 60 cubes at home like they're really far from beating the world record still yeah <laughs> you know like yeah uh you have to be like super comfortable with 60 cubes and basically be able to like uh get 50 plus points on it on a large majority of attempts to have like any chance at getting 58 points officially, you know? Yeah. Considering how rare mil official multi-blind attempts are, but also just nerves. So yeah, like people freak out at it, but it's like, I'm honestly still not that worried. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be like cocky or anything. Yeah. But people, people think a lot, there's like people who would think that like next time Ro competes, he'll beat the world record easy, but like, that's totally not the case. Mm. Like, mm. And, uh, and 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 that's it's, why it's still it's, it's still hard to beat i still feel like it's a little solidly like i'm i'm solidly holding the record but i don't know ro yeah. could prove me wrong i yeah. i'm doubtful about anybody else doing it to be honest <laughs> i mean yeah it, it definitely feels like ro is probably the main person but i i i think mostly what makes me float that thought is the idea that we're we live in a world now where this conversation can happen right if we were talking two years ago there's just yeah, nobody who's sure. in the conversation, you know? And yeah, now we're like, like oh. when I got that record, there was, I think the second best ever result anybody had done unofficially was like 52 points by Yu Chang Chen. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It was totally not even like something that, like, like when I got that record, I was like, I literally have this record like guaranteed for like at least a year, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, now it's like definitely a different story, like you're saying. <clears throat> and and so it's it's kind of in that context that I'm I'm really interested in having this conversation, which is like, um, 
how like oh sorry for for everybody coming in who doesn't know what we're actually talking about we we're particularly focusing today on like Graham telling us how, like, what was the journey of getting to 60 points and what, what were kind of the, the milestones on that journey? How did he kind of break the different cube and point and sub hour barriers? And so it's like, it's in this context that I'm like, damn, dude, you got, you got good, like way before everybody else, you know, and people are now starting to catch up, but like, what, what was that? that, that that's kind of what the next little bit will, will be about yeah. is like, what, 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 what's the story of that and how did you get there? You know? Um, so should I actually talk about all the little barriers? Yeah, like dude. Uh, the ten twenty. Yeah. Um, did it, at, at how much? Uh, how much do you have like prepped or in your head? Like, do, do you want me to, to guide the conversation? I mean, I or should I just dude. like? I can I can mostly remember it. I don't I don't have like specific like ten or twenty or thirty cube barriers because I don't think I ever tried like those exact numbers actually. Yeah, yeah. But Th those uh, are like thumb sucks. I mean, I'm sure you'll know what the barriers. There are definitely for you like there are definitely like big uh big bullet points in the timeline of my improvement because there's like this pattern of like i would feel like stuck at a point for like a really long time and then i would get like a massive pb and then i would like improve a lot for like a few months and then i would get stuck for a really long time again Interesting. so like <clears throat> so like big non-linear progress would you say like what was that like big nonlinear progress, like plateau and then pop, yeah, and then interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. It was like a huge pattern that happened like at yeah, least four times. Um, when I first started doing multi blind, I think it was like, well, if I want to get really detailed about it, I Do learned it. three blind. I learned three blind like three months after I learned how to solve a Rubik's cube, and then, um, or like two months after, and then I got it down to like four or five minutes or something and i it was like stressing me out like everybody who's learned three blind knows how it's like pretty stressful when you're pretty slow at it because you spend like five minutes on memo and then if you if you could just like totally forget something because you're not used to it and yeah. just waste 10 minutes yeah um it's like baby's first multi blind like, it's like yeah it's i just exactly. like stopped practicing it because yeah. of that it was just like stressing me out and i didn't really like it okay but then uh so when when, like when, when was that like time wise like what year was that that you that was like um well i started cubing in 2014 november i think and then so that that was like in january of 2015 i learned yeah. how to do blind and then i basically did it for like a few weeks and then just like put it down and never really did it for like a year and i picked it back up in like spring of 2016 when i was going to go to my first comp because it had blind and i wanted to get a blind success of that comp right and so i practiced like a bunch for a few weeks leading up to it and i got fun fun fact about that comp is you know like comps for blind ev events in particular they have like cumulative cutoffs for how long you can spend doing your three attempts um, right and at this comp it was 10 minutes and my first two attempts were like over four minutes i think and then my third attempt was four minutes 44 seconds so like i definitely went over the time limit but nobody stopped me <laughs> and the third attempt was the only it was the only success so like if the judge had stopped me i wouldn't have gotten success in my first comp and That's that would also mean i don't have a perfect three blind uh record officially which i still do to this day so it's almost like like I have like Damn. a stupid I have like eighty something rounds of three blind with no DNFs, no triple DNFs, I mean. <laughs> and it's, it's almost wild. it almost feels it almost feels illegitimate, you know. <laughs> because of that comp. Yeah. And just like somebody didn't stop me when they should have. Damn you know, dude. We gotta we gotta find that like, judge and report them to the WCA. This is uh <laughs> funny thing is I think I know it's I think it was Riley Wu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know who Riley Wu is. He's Not at all. Mine, so. Okay. Uh, he he was kind of well known back in the day. He had like a really famous video on YouTube because he had like this crazy miss scramble and he got like a three on it or something when that was like totally unheard of. Like yeah. UWR was four or something. Damn. But anyways, people knew who he was because of that. Okay. Oh, and he was he had the feet he had feet uh uh national champion or something. <laughs> Big move. He was also good at the blind. Yeah. <clears throat> he liked three blind. But anyways, I'm rambling. That's uh, cool. I do this. I will do this a lot. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, what we're here for, dude. Okay. Yeah. And then I I think I did a two cube multi blind after that comp just because I was like, hey, why not? And it was like 17 minutes. 
And I think I did it the first try, but yeah, it was like 17 minutes. And then I got it down to like eight minutes after like a couple weeks, I think. And then I had a comp that was like three months after that first one, and it had multi-blinds, so I practiced it a little bit. And I only did like three cubes at home, but I think that was like fairly easy for me. I did it like multiple times. And then on the first attempt of at that comp, I did three out of three. That's my first ever official multi Ooh. result. It was like and 20 minutes. When was that timeline wise? I should probably have your WCA that profile. Was, was, so, like, the first ever comp was spring 2016. That comp was summer 2016. Right. Um, and, and then I tried four cubes for the next couple attempts at that comp, and I totally blew it both times. And I was like, all right, maybe I should. Because that was the first time I ever tried four cubes. And I yeah. was like, maybe I should try using rooms because I wasn't using rooms yet. And I was like, I've heard about this. Maybe it'll help. And uh, <laughs> uh, so I like, I, I specifically remember learning it. I like looked at uh, Noah Arthur's has a video about memory palace stuff. And I'm like impatient with shit like that. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. I don't know if I should curse because I just realized. Uh, but, uh, I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I was like really impatient, so I watched. It's like a five or ten minute video, if I remember correctly, right. and I like skimmed through it and probably spent like a minute watching it, and then I just was like, "Oh, this seems pretty like straightforward." So I just like made a few rooms, and then I did a four cube attempt, and so like my previous four cube attempts had been like thirty plus minutes, and like zero to two out of four each attempt right and uh and then the first try after me after watching that video and then making rooms like literally a half hour after watching that video probably i did four out of four in 23 minutes <laughs> and i was like <laughs> what i was like shocked yeah and then i think it, i was like a few days later maybe i did seven cubes because it's all the three by threes i owned and I was like, why not? I could probably sub hour it just given like what happened last time. And I got seven out of seven in forty nine minutes. Damn. And I was like hooked immediately, you know. <laughs> and was was that like uh, was that experience of it, it feels like a like a Jimmy Neutron like brain blast kind of like when that like... happened, I like told I told everybody in my family. <laughs> and I, had already, I, I like recorded it. I felt like yeah, it made me feel like a genius. Damn, dude. <laughs> Like like the, uh, the the dude in Limitless, it's like, damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just learning how to use a memory palace is basically like taking yeah. that pill. <laughs> exactly, and and so it was was that like a big? It sounds like how big that do you like think that was big... in motivating you to be like, holy crap, I could. Well, yeah, were, were I was you at that point like, being like, excited? Okay, I was not super excited about multi blind, but then when that happened, I was like, oh my god, yeah, like, I was okay. like, okay. I can improve at this like super fast and I already like knew about the rankings. Like I think at that point, um like Mark Boynowski had had North American record in multi blind for a really long time, even like before I started cubing. And his North Mer Mer American record at that point was like thirty points or thirty two points or something. And I was right. like, All right, that's impossible. But uh but North American record two is by Kale and it's like twenty one points. And I was like, I just got seven with like few days of practice like i could probably get there uh, okay <laughs> okay so i got like really stoked like started doing the thing that everybody does when they're like getting excited is like going for like really obscure rankings basically <laughs> yeah. and uh like oh i'm gonna get the like uh state record for pure rank single or something yeah exactly exactly in I'm my like, sub county like, I'm gonna go for second best in North America for multi blinds, <laughs> which is yeah. like practically nobody does, you know. <laughs> but, but you found your niche, um, dude. Damn. Okay, okay. So if I'm, yeah. it sounds like mid 2016, like mid year 2016 was the first time you were like, hmm, I want to try to go for like, when a multi blind like, ranking. Yeah, yeah. It was That's when, when you, I got excited about it. Yeah. It was when you, you, you tasted the sauce. Oh, yeah. oh, sick. Okay. Okay. I don't think I really at that point like started practicing a lot, but I was excited about it. I just wasn't like grinding. I think I was still doing like a lot of I think I was like at that time learning four blind and five blind also and like doing a lot of three blind. So there's just like a lot of blind stuff that I was excited about. Right. But um I think I like got to like fourteen out of fifteen by like that winter or something, or like maybe fall. 
and then I was like, uh, a, like a comp a comp was announced for January of 2017, and it had multi blind. It was like an all blind events comp, and so I was like, all right, I'm gonna aim for doing 21 cubes at that comp because 21 is what I need for NAR two, <laughs> and uh, I started like. I did that was like my first like multi blind like road to road to twenty one yes. multi blind or whatever. I Dude, like I, I love that that set of titles in your playlist. Like that's actually been like I've stalked your yeah. YouTube and been like, damn, this is so cool. Like I wanna I I, I really enjoyed that. Exactly I don't remember what exactly was my best result before that comp. It might have been like eighteen out of twenty one or something. But then I like or no, it might have been 20 out of 21. I don't remember. But that was that comp was when I realized, like, you probably shouldn't try the number of cubes that is, like, the most you're able to sub-hour, you know, yeah. at a comp. And Crap. UCLA PBQ 2017. That's the one. Yeah, I've got that's your... where I met Sean, too. What? The, the legend of Sean. We could do a little uh, segue into that, too. Oh, dude. Want. Okay, okay. Hold that. Sorry, hold that for a second. Uh, sorry. Just trying to manage my windows. But yeah, dude, I I, the, I was wondering if you were talking about these attempts because I have a, I think in October, November for me, when I was like last year, when, when I was trying to push 20 cubes and like struggling to stay motivated before I'd found your Twitch streams yet, I was, I was genuinely like going through these videos and like, Instead of like watching oh, you watch like, the 21. Yeah, yeah, dude. Instead of like watching YouTube, I'd be like, I've got to get hyped for multi. And then I would like be like, this is, I want, I want to do 21, 23 cubes in comp. And I like watch dude, this. The funny so thing about those, those 21 cube attempts that I just remembered too, it's, it's, it's funny because it like ties into everything that you probably want to talk about too. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm remembering that with those 21 cube attempts, I did some really weird review system that didn't really make sense thinking back on it. It seemed logical to me at the time, but like I hadn't really like realized what's efficient for multi blind, and uh, like I think I was doing like memo one through three, review one through three, memo six through nine, review six uh, through nine, six through nine, nine. nice, nice, nice. nice. Yeah. But I was like, I don't remember exactly how, but I was like favoring some packs more than others, mm. like some some packs were getting more reviews than others for no reason, and. It like yeah, it had like no logic to it really. Interesting. And then I made friends with Sean at that comp, that comp where I tried twenty one cubes, and um, he like already knew a bunch about multi blind because he had like practiced it for a while, and he was good friends with Mark, and Mark had told him a bunch of stuff. Like he basically like grilled Mark to get a bunch of help, I guess. Right. And so he gave me all like the knowledge that Mark had given him, and then I like. I was like, oh my god, dude, this makes so much sense. He's like, you don't want to, like, review some packs more than others. Like, I see in this thing. Like, he had me send him his my whole review system and everything, oh, and I did. Grand. He's like, yeah, you don't want to do that. You want to do this. And I was like, oh. Mm. Totally makes sense to me. And it all became, like, a fun little strategy game. You know? Right. <laughs> so, Sean was hugely helpful to me in my journey. I will always shout out Ishan. He's the best. Damn. Yeah, dude. I I I want to get into the story of Ishan. So it sounds like this. Uh, do, do I have the right comp? Do you know offhand? UCLA PBQ twenty seventeen was like May twenty seventeen. Oh, oh wait, sorry, not UCLA. It was UC oh, Berkeley. It? Uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah, winter winter PBQ or something. All right, I'm stalking you I quickly. In, I think it was in January. Oh. Twenty seventeen. I've got a 14 out of 20 multi blind from the 6th of February. Yeah, yeah. And I, I tried. That I actually, I got my PR at that comp, which was, uh, what, 12 out of 16, I think. And I beat the 14 out of 20 by time. Nice. That was when I realized, like, okay, yeah, I, don't, I shouldn't attempt this much. Okay. Was it 20 cubes, not 21? Was I totally remembering wrong? Oh, uh, oh sorry. It's, it it's in one hour. So yeah. I'm wondering, sorry, Chad, this okay, is, this I'm is going to be really wrong. a little back and forth, but as long as Graham and I are digging it, you can friggin' survive. We um, put these details down perfectly. Dude, genuinely, I'm so like, I'm so freaking anal about stuff like this. Um, yeah, yeah, the comp, I got 12 out of 16 on the first attempt. Dude, you know what's annoying? Yeah. That 
I, I could have gotten fixed, but didn't. I got um I got twelve out of sixteen or no. I don't remember actually. I was gonna say kidney stones. The <laughs> yeah, true. Uh that third attempt it says DNF. That wasn't DNF. Somebody wrote it as DNF for some reason, but it that third attempt wasn't DNF. I think it was also I think I might have gotten like twelve out of twenty or something like that. Or maybe another fourteen out of twenty. I don't right. know. But it wasn't DNF, but I just was like, eh, why would I care? Like, it's not the best attempt. Yeah, yeah. But now I kind of care. because, Dude, now you're literally live on Twitch TV and we're reviewing like, this result. Yeah, Indeed. like, that would have been a meme. That would have been my first meme. Oh, crap. That's true, actually. Kind of makes me sad. So. Damn. Okay, so it was it was PBQ Berkeley 2017. That was like, because this, this yeah. sounds like a pretty significant comp for you. And uh, Mark was at that comp, too. That's where I met Mark. Oh, and he sad. got a... Uh, I think it was that comp where he tried 41 cubes for the first time, or maybe like the second time, and that was like a huge deal, because nobody had ever tried 41 besides Masco, or like even close to that much besides Masco. <laughs> and Mark was just kind of going for it, even though he hadn't gotten like a great result on it at home, he was just like going for it, because that's, right. that's Mark, you know? Damn. So, that's cool. That's cool. And I okay. think he got NAR no he went for, he was going for 42 sorry he yeah 42. yeah and he got an ar he's ever attempted officially damn and he got 37 out of 42 at that comp most anyone's ever attempted because he was going for one more than mark is that the vibe uh then then masco yeah sorry then masco not himself correct yeah okay damn yeah, so that was big, okay. big stuff and was that like was that like pretty hype for you to watch or was that like totally overwhelming no that was really cool yeah it was really cool. Uh, I remember seeing that he had like a suitcase full of cubes and like a huge tripod, and I was like, "Damn, dude, this guy is like pro." <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Okay, so, and you met Ishan there as well. You started to you started to learn the good news of review systems. Um, mm -hmm. where, where 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 does the story go from there? Where where, where do you want to go from there? Um, well, I was pretty sad about my performance of that comp, uh, a feeling that would become very familiar for, <laughs> for years to come. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that was like the first time I was ever like super sad about a comp because it was sad. like, I think I triple DNF five blind and four blind and my best three blind single was a 109, I think, which was PR, but like horrible for me. That also was the first comp where I was like using three freestyle, I think, but it wasn't full oh, three really? style. It was like just corners. I'm pretty okay. sure. Kind of hard to remember the details of yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. But, um, cause it sounds like you switched quite yeah. gradually to three style. So there's not like a, yeah, that's something I mentioned. Yeah. I yeah. Switched to three style really slowly. Like a lot of people are just like, all right, I'm just learning three style. I'm going to do it as fast as I can. And then like start using full three style next time I do solves. But yeah, I was just like very, very slowly. Well, for corners, it was more like I was doing a lot of, I, I like didn't learn a set of Alex. I was just like improvising three style comms in solves for a really long time. And then like just fixing a few every day, basically, and making right. them better. For edges, it was more like I knew of like a handful of cases I could do with comms. And I was just like, sprinkling them in over m2 and then like more and more until I, it was all three style so it was like really bad way to do it but i think i like really i really favor just being able to do solves and like because that's like the most fun part for me so i just like to do solves a bunch yeah yeah and it's a lot more fun i don't know i just I, don't i don't want to like i don't want to take like a whole month just like not ever being able to do a solve yeah because i hate that that's that's basically so. how i learned was i was just like we we literally straws and i were at a comp um we we had a comp and then all comps were canceled because of covid and then literally the comp ended like march 15th or something march 16th i sat down and i was like cool i'll learn, I'll learn three style in a month and then like three months later i haven't done a three blind solve and i'm just like in yeah. the desert like <laughs> Dying. but yeah. yeah it's brutal but that being said i do remember i, I also met jacob posner at that competition oh that's a um, name jacob posner's it. he's the one who made that drilling program that i've shared with a bunch of people oh okay yeah, yeah he I was know. like 
he was faster than me at three blind at that time. Like I remember he got a like a forty five or something PR single and three blind at that call. Right. And uh that was like really cool for him. Um and then he like I think he had already made that program and Ashan was using it a bunch and or he had used it a bunch. Ashan was averaging like twenty five at that point at that comp. Um yeah. and so he was like, Yeah, just use this, it's like really helpful and I was like, All right. And that program was like another milestone because I remember I just started using it. It's basically just like a flashcard program for anybody who doesn't know. You just like give it a text document and put all of your letter pairs in the text document that you want to practice, like a set, like like A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, A, F, et cetera, et cetera, if you want to just do like one set. And um, so I, I started drilling with that program and I remember seeing like massive improvements super quickly. Like it was kind of mind blowing. And I was just doing corners, I think at this time. <clears throat> and I remember like I had, I was doing it while I had office hours at school because I was teaching physics lab classes right. and nobody would ever go to office hours. And then I would just like drill with that program. And then I remember, I, like, I have vi vivid memories for some reason of like this specifically, but drilling with that program at office hours and then later that day going and I was like doing work in the lab that I was working in and I was like taking a break at one point. So I did some solves and I like destroyed my three blind PB mean of three by like five seconds. I think I dropped it from like, I think I dropped it from like 54 mean to 49. And I was like, what? Damn. And... So yeah, I got like really addicted to that program and I started just like using it a ton. And I think I dropped my three blind global from like 50, like high fifties to like sub 40 in like a few months or something or two months. So yeah, that was like, there was a whole, whole box of things that opened up after that competition, basically is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, dude, I'm, I'm busy doing, doing a little, a little mind map in the background just keeping track of this and there's there's a lot of arrows coming out of that <laughs> that pbq berkeley yeah. node damn okay cool so so you you started drilling you started drilling a lot of three style is kind of one of the one of the things that started happening and at this point you were still using you were still using uh weird buffers right by weird i mean non-uf ufr they were not weird at the time yeah yeah, yeah. they it was it was pretty normal for most people to use df ubl at that time right. i guess i did use fd which is which was always weird i always used fd for anybody who doesn't did, know that did you mislearn um, from a tutorial i'm still i'm still confused about that because i remember somebody asking me like why do you use fd and i was like oh i learned from uh zane carney's m2 tutorial and, and he teaches fd in that tutorial and they're like no he doesn't and I'm like, yeah, he does. What? <laughs> and then I was, Dude. I was like, I, I was so sure that he did because I was like, that I always knew. I was like, that's yeah. why I use FD and everybody else uses DF because they learned from Noah's tutorial. And then I went and looked, and Zane doesn't teach FD, so, so I have no freaking idea what happened. Dude, straws in my I don't chat. Even remember. This exact conversation happened like a day or two ago, dude. That like straws, straws. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? But Strauss was like, dude, I use FD because I didn't learn from Noah's tour. I learned from this weird guy. And then Squested was like, Zane. And then he was like, yeah. And then it was like, but Zane also teaches like a DF. So, dude, I don't know. Something, either okay, you and Strauss are on a wavelength. To me. Yeah, that's yeah. But to me. something maybe, must have maybe happened. There's some, maybe there's some hidden Zane Carney tutorial that we both used. Yeah. And it's like no longer there or something. Or he like pointed at the wrong piece at some point or something. Cause I'm just like, that's such a, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm curious about that. Yeah. I'm going to watch the video later Damn. and see if I can understand this. <laughs> but it was so funny hearing you say that. Cause I was like, I was genuinely like, was Sig in my chat or, or did that exact conversation literally happen like two days ago or something? That's so funny. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That was weird. Okay. But anyways, okay. yeah, I used FD and UBL. And, uh, I didn't switch. Well, I guess, yeah, it, it was like a year until I switched. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I used, I used FD DBL for like about a year okay. or FD, FD UBL for about a year. 
So like from early 2017 until I think it was like March of 2018 that I learned UF first. Right. And then uh, I think UF it was August after. of 2018 that I learned UFR corners. And I obviously yeah. prioritized UFR, UF first because for anybody wondering, the switch from UBL to UFR is, at least as far as three blind goes, way, way, way smaller of an optimization than the switch from FD to UF. The switch from FD to UF is massive. Interesting. It's like such a huge, such a huge difference. At least that's the feeling that I got. Maybe that's because my FD was horrible. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure most people would agree with that. Like the switch from FD to UF is huge and you should do it first. For so hit, hit, hit me with those dates again. So, I, I mean, we're talking... We're talking basically so start started, of 2017, you did you did three cell with DF uh UBL. Yeah. Do you know what's funny that I'm trying yes. to remember? I think I started learning like I learned how comms worked. Uh I think it was like September of 2016. And I like very, very slowly started using them in, in solves. And then I was like basically fully using bad three style UBL by like yeah January or February 2017. That's how right. slowly I learned three style corners. A uh, snap. Okay. Uh, and that was just corners. Then, yeah. Yeah, and then I think after that, maybe like a, a couple months after that, I started doing the same for edges. Um I was like way more confused about getting used to edge three style than corner three style for some reason and i learned recently that's like most people have the, the the opposite experience they find corners a lot harder than edges for learning three style i would um, definitely say it was the case for me like that it was the opposite for you than yeah i had like yeah. two months to learn corners one less than one two to three weeks i, mean, I don't know how edges, long so. it it, it might have taken me longer to learn corners, but, uh, like, that, that I think, was just because I was, like, like new to just comms in general. Yeah, yeah. And then, I'm like, it might have been faster learning edges, I think, just because I knew, like, how to learn that stuff yeah. better at that point. But, but the experience was, like, was still really, more difficult. I was, like, procrastinating learning edges for a really long time because so. I, like, was so confused trying to, like, set up four movers and stuff. Interesting. And, like just finding insertions. The insertions have always confused the crap out of me. <laughs> I remember that. So, yeah, I put it off for a long time. Just so yeah, it was that. like okay, okay. It was like three style UBL by like early 2017. Three style FD by like I don't know spring 2017, and then I switched to UF three style in march of 2018 and then i switched to ufr three style in august of 2018 oh wow so wow 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 i really took my time before switching yes so but, sorry i'm gonna ask those dates again march march 2018 was uf three style yeah and then august 2018 was ufr yeah. damn okay that that is like surprisingly a long time i would say because 2018 you were you, pretty good by that point i feel like yeah i learned ufr corners after i got um national champ and multi-blind i like i specifically put it off until after that because i didn't know if i would be able to learn it like comfortable enough before yeah. nets but i don't know it's like fair decision mm. but I, I i definitely didn't realize before that because mark switched to uf ufr before me and like since we were like pretty close in skill level at that point we were like talking a bunch about multi-blind stuff all the time and he learned uf and ufr both at the same time and just kind of like knocked it out in a couple months i think and he realized um before me obviously that when you learn ufr it's like really like learning uf is nice but learning ufr and uf has like a huge boon for multi-blind because you can use ufur swap and then like it makes dealing with parity uh, way way easier yeah and and then you can also like not even including using weak swap it's like a huge boon yeah. you don't have to deal with any annoying 2e 2e which is like a thing you have to do basically if you do ecec -EC and multi-blind yeah. but um yeah when you 
when you finally learn like specifically UFR, you can start doing the UFUR swap and do all this really cool stuff to deal with parity and multi blind, yeah. and it saves actually like a ton of time yeah. uh, at a high level. Damn. And I didn't realize that, so I like had put it off for a long time. So I don't know if I knew it before, I might have learned UFR earlier, but I don't know. So to to yeah. deal with um, what what were you doing to deal with parity then before you could do UFUR swap? Were you doing um. Two E two E, like you said. So, uh, yeah. So when I was using FD UBL, I basically just learned. I think Neil Gore. I don't know if you know about Neil Gore. He I was like also have seen their YouTube. Yeah, he was like one of my other like best cubing friends. We had like a uh, fun rivalry like in three blind with each other all the time. Um, and he got faster than me for sure. He's like got he's got like an amazing turning and just like. I don't know. If you ever watch any of his solves, you just see his turning. It's like so so good and fast. He, it's just like easy for him. Um, but he genned, he genned and like found a bunch of 2e2e two two algs with uh, basically like DF to something, like DF to some to any edge plus ULUB so that you can basically deal with parity when you're doing EC, EC and multi-blind. Right. And it's like a twenty twenty one alg set, and they're kind of annoying algs, a lot of them, but some of them are really easy, like that one. Uh, this is one of the two e two e cases, right? ULUB, at least for me, ULUB, and then a uh, DF DR, and that's like S prime M prime U two M U or no S prime M prime. Saying it slowly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. S prime M prime U M U two S U. That's like a, actually a one you can do like really fast. Yeah. Yeah. But that looks really one nice. Of the other ones are not that nice. Yeah. One of the <laughs> one of the cool ones is a. Uh, it's basically a calm canceled with a five style alg, and Neil found Ooh. this, and it's actually it's actually so nice. This is for D F R F U L U B. And it just goes like I don't know if I can even say it. Oops. <laughs> Damn. I messed it up. <laughs> Whatever. This is yeah, dude. This this is literally it. Anyways. It's like this stuff is is branded onto your soul, and then you need to like. I haven't tried like, to slow it down. For, I haven't used this mold or this uh e e two e two e set for a super long time, but <laughs> I still actually remember this out because yeah. it's just so nice. Adam, dude, thank you so much for that raid. We're just chatting with Sig at the you, moment. Uh... <laughs> dude, I really want to figure it out. This feels like me trying to explain a J-Boom to somebody. <laughs> I like just did it like three times, but, you know, mm. saying it out loud is way too hard. Mm. Anyways, dude, I'm a rambler. No, uh, dude, I love it. I, I love that, it. I learned that whole EC... <laughs> I learned that whole 2E2E two -E set so you can deal with Parity and multi blind when yes. you do ECEC with U UBL DF. It's a right. huge mouthful. But then when I learned UF, uh, and I was using for so, like six months, I was or something like that. You were using UF, UF UBL, right? UBL, yeah. So I learned a, I I gened and learned a whole two e two e set Holy crap. that was UF to any piece plus ULUV. Yeah. And so like one of those is a Z perm but the rest are not as nice. Damn, dude, okay. Yeah. But so, then when you learn UF, you are, all right, UF, UFR, with UF, you are swap, it gets way, way nicer. Yeah, because then you're stuff. just using like, um, your, the, what, what, what are now the standard UF, you are, UFR parity outs, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, those parity outs, but to deal with like, Edge parity specifically is like that's what all the two e two e logs are for is like yeah. dealing with edge parity, which you won't get in three blind if you do the smart tracing. Yeah. Um, yeah, those two e two e's deal with edge parity, but edge parity when you're using uf ufr is just gonna be appending to ur, yeah. or do weak swap, and then like half of the times you don't even have to do that. Yeah. Okay, dude, that's wild. So you you basically learned like. Two two e two e sets on your journey to to UF UFR. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I should say, I did get help with that uh that UF to any piece plus U L U B set from Mark. But like he gemmed the whole thing for it and then he just decided, okay, I'm just gonna learn UFR because this is annoying. <laughs> but I didn't do that. So I And then and then he was like, Yeah, yeah, Sig, you can you can learn these L's that yeah. I have no use for. Yeah, and I use some of them, but I like gen some of my own. And that whole thing is on my uh my calm list. Oh snap! Okay. I have I have both of those two e two e lists on my on my sheet. Nice. Well, for anybody who wants to take that path as well. Yeah, and go find that alg that I could. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's such a good alg. I can't believe Neil found that. A cancel yeah. between a five style alg and a calm. That's dude, friggin' where where is where is Abajit when you need him, dude? He would be all over that. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exclamation type yo stuff. in chat. Yeah. <laughs> any 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 yoers? Any yoers in chat? Um <laughs> Okay, so nice. <laughs> Thank, thanks for that yo. So you really helped the stream out. Um Thank you. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> Damn, dude, uh, I'm 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 loving this. How's the? I I know it's a bit later for you. How how is your? Uh, oh, I'm good. How's, how's I go to bed at like sick. I go to bed at like one a.m. every night. So sick. So okay, it's eleven we, right now. We got some room. We got some room. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of stuff. So P PBQ is kind of this. It's kind of this PBQ Berkeley twenty seventeen. It's kind of this nexus for you. You start grinding out. Um, Three style comms. We've we've talked a lot about kind of your three style uh, progression from there, but but let's let's kind of go back to your kind of next steps from PBQ. So you're you're at this point, you're trying to hit twenty one cubes, right? Or or you're you're going for NAR two. Yeah, I guess it was, I guess it was twenty, but. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I had like road to twenty cubes. And I don't actually I don't remember like the exact progression. I don't know if you have the uh uh the playlist pl pulled up, but I don't remember what my best result. It might have been like eighteen out of twenty before that comp. And then yeah, I got like fourteen out of twenty at the comp, which was big sag. But um after that I started I think Oh I think crap, dude, it was comp, eighteen I out of twenty. 18 out of 20 was the best result before yeah, the comp. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that sounds right. And then um I think I got 19 out of 20 shortly after that comp, if I remember yeah. correctly. And then I yeah. started trying 25. And... and then you had uncut and embarrassing first 25 in blind attempt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, the video, yeah. Um and that 25 grind was basically like like fairly shortly after the Berkeley comp happened, um, my friend Kevin Matthews, who I also met at the Berkeley comp, Damn. announced the comp because he was at UCLA studying math for a PhD, and he also like basically ran the Cube Club there and had a class, and so he was doing, he would like do competitions at UCLA with the help of, uh, not Kevin, a, a delegate named not Kevin, um, that's his name. Don't worry about it, uh and some people from ucla are laughing their asses off now i'm yeah. convinced of it yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah he announced the comp it was something sometime in like spring at ucla and i was like well, you know whatever i'll drive down there because yeah. i'm from san diego and i could basically just like drive to san diego and then visit family and then on my way back to where i was going to school in san francisco stop at ucla stay with kevin for a night and then go to that comp and so I was like practicing 25 cubes for that comp. And I remember the first attempt of that comp was horrible. I tried 25 and I think I got like 17 out of 25. Damn. Um, and I, I guess I should say before that comp, I think the best result I had gotten on 25 was 23 or something like that. Oh, 15 out of 25. Yeah. But then I, well, oh, 15 out of 25 at the comp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a huge distraction during that because... I was recording my attempt with my phone and then I had forgotten to turn off my my uh, alarm clock on my phone and it went off and it like stopped the video but I couldn't go touch my phone because it would DNF my attempt. Oh, crap. So I had to like tell somebody to like turn the, the alarm off my phone 
And it was like during everybody else's attempts too, so I felt really bad. And it was like a huge concentration breaker. Yeah, and that was also like eight. That attempt was like eight in the morning, and I'm not an an early bird at all. So was 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 that, that your wake up alarm? Bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like my normal wake up alarm or something. <laughs> uh, That's so brutal. Yeah. And so oh it like stopped the video too. So I was like, well, now I'm not recording my attempt. Cool. And I also so... just distracted the shit out of everybody. Yeah. And yeah, it was great. So you just um, so that died a social death, and your uh, yeah. your multi blind attempt then, died along with you. And then the next attempt I did at that comp was seventeen out of twenty one. Yeah, which was PR, but still trash for me. And then yeah. I did twenty three on the next attempt, and I got nineteen out of twenty three. And I was like, all right, that's okay. Nice. And I also okay. got my first five blind official success there, Ooh. and I got like a, I think I got like a first sub five and four blind or something like that something that i was like really stoked on yeah but yeah the best 25 cube attempt before that that was 23 out of 25 and 57 yeah. minutes i just checked and so were so, you yeah, getting getting 15 out of 25 was sad was yeah yeah oh but but actually with the context from that now it it would feel at least if i got that i would obviously be frustrated with the context of the attempt but it's not like you just kind of shat the bed and whoopsie dnf'd um 10 cubes yeah. it's like yeah that was like 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 we were saying before i think i was still learning like you don't you don't try the maximum number of cubes you're able to sub out yeah 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 it just doesn't it doesn't work basically it'll it'll pretty much never work and 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 so what was like because so you you tried for 25 and then you go down to 21 and then you went up to 23 so it was like were, were you going into that 25 cube attempt i mean obviously we're talking about ancient history now so i don't know how much you remember but were you like oh maybe i shouldn't be doing 25 but like yes let's yellow it and see and then you got your ass kicked and went down to 21 or like what was your no, like, was, like what was your process about it oh, that really? was like okay that was like for sure before I really knew the mental game very well. Oh, like, like, cause I definitely remember like being really sure, like, I think I could, cause I had three attempts. So I was like, oh, I definitely could get something really good on 25. Like, I did yeah. 23 out of 25 at home in 57 minutes. I could do that again. Basically. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I could that... emulate my best home performance at a competition. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was like, I don't know, my fourth time ever doing blind in a comp or something or multi-blind yeah. third time doing multi-blind in a comp so i don't know yeah you could forgive me for being so foolish i guess yeah yeah now now you're <laughs> you're wiser to the ways of the world um oh yeah yeah i've learned through a lot of pain and suffering <laughs> so okay sick um and and at this point you're thing, still yeah. i'm seeing uh -huh. that i remember vividly this is a definitely a big like point in the timeline of my multi-blind life mm -hmm. like a week or two after that comp i got 25 out of 25 in 56 minutes and that was like huge for me like oh, snap that was like the most hyped i've been in multi-blind for a very long time so that was your first nr2 result uh that was at home but yeah yeah sorry sorry but, but, but that, that was the first time that you had even at home you had beaten in r2 if i remember right the nar2 was 21 points and so the 23 out of 25 would be tied i don't know what time on it was uh, but true. yeah yeah the yeah. so 25 okay, okay. out of 25 was like i think i i had done like so many 25 cube attempts just trying so hard to get 25 out of 25 and yeah anybody who does multi blind knows how hard an event is and so when i got it i was like incredibly yeah. stoked because yeah. i i mean your video titles at this stage are road to 25 out of 25 um yeah and and so did you i i mean i feel like pushing 25 cubes and you you had a pretty good sense that full in out of n at that number of cubes is like really hard yeah <laughs> yeah i i don't think i quite knew how hard it was because i was like i kept getting really close and i was like why can't i do this it shouldn't be that bad you know like i didn't have like like now i'm what is that called? There's like that curve of like knowledge. Oh, Dunning-Kruger syndrome. Is that what it is? I Where think like, so. Where you're, you don't know like a lot about something, something and you're super confident. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. When you're in the middle, you're like, wow, this is hard or something. <laughs> when you're at <laughs> yeah. the 
when you're like an actual expert you're like i know my limitations uh i'm pretty good i'm not amazing basically. yeah and and what's so great about that is your your so basically chat for those who don't know it, it tracks so your x-axis is like your skill level in something and your y-axis is your level of confidence and the idea is that yeah. when you're a beginner like you don't know enough to realize how little you know and so your confidence is like sky high and then it plummets profoundly and then it comes back up but even it's when you're an expert for life, yeah <laughs> it's true actually you could also put age on the x-axis um yeah but yeah. What, what i love about that is your expert levels of confidence at least according to the model never come close to your beginner levels of confidence yeah <laughs> like you never get back there <laughs> yep oh man it do be like that. Yeah. It do, be. <laughs> do be like that sometimes. Damn. Okay. So like 25 out of 25 was a, was like a big blip on the, on the like multi-plan progression radar for you. Oh yeah. That what? was like one of those huge, I think like the first one was like seven cubes. That was like the first huge P. Yeah. And then the next one was 25 out of 25. Damn. Yeah. And then after that, I started just like grinding specifically for 33 cubes because at that time NAR was 32 points. Right. So that's specifically why I was doing that. And I, that's a big jump, you know, from 25 to 33 cubes. But I like my first attempts on it were like over an hour and 10 minutes. And I was just like, whatever, I'm just going to keep going and yeah. get better at it. So um, at, at some point here, right, you start deciding to, oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, there's a. Uh... Three questions vying for attention in my mind. Uh, let me let me choose my favorite child quickly. Um, okay, actually, actually, before we get there, um, what like we've 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 talked a lot about like what the significant like moments were, and I suppose we've talked about your like methodology, your your execution method. But like, I mean, going from zero to twenty five, there's a lot kind of happening here, right? Um, like yeah to talk to us about what your what your practice was here um like was um, were you uh and and oh I'll, I'll just let you go for it and then i've got more specific questions if you need but if yeah, i'm trying to remember i need to like actually peek at one of those videos to make sure what i was doing because when i'm looking at this like multi-blind progression playlist that i made on my youtube channel um one of them I uploaded is 10 cube attempt and I did 10 out of 10 in 14 minutes. And this is like kind of in between wow. when I was, when I was doing, uh, 25 and doing 33. Dude, that's really but, fast. So, At least for me. With, that's, yeah. With this 10 cube attempt, I was doing packs of eight. So that's interesting. I think I had like just started doing that at that point. Or something. Cause, Cause for a hot second, you were doing packs of six, right? Yeah. And was I there a particular rhyme or reason to why you started Pax of Six? Uh, just like was what felt comfortable, basically. Okay, so I was doing Pax of Eight for the twenty-five attempts too. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't quite remember exactly my review system. I don't think I was doing really Pax of Eight. I think I was doing like Pax of Four, but everything was just organized in Pax of Eight. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing like Memo One through Four, Review One through Four, Memo Five through Eight, Review Five through Eight, et cetera, et cetera. Kind of similar to like the review system I would do now. That was like what I was doing with twenty five, um, except like doing it in packs of four instead of packs of eight. So yeah. just kind of like halved, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think like up until I was doing twenty five cubes, I had I was doing packs of three, and uh, it was just because like like the the amount of cubes that you memo and review together should probably just kind of depend on how fast you can trace a single cube, you know? Yeah. Um, and, like, comfortably retain, like, a little bit of it, at least. Yeah. So, I don't know. I started with three just because it felt comfortable and then started doing four because, I don't know, seemed like the right thing to do at the time, I guess. I don't know. And, and your um and and your so, sorry to cut in your like tracing system for this because we've I I I've, I've bothered you kind of in your chat and oh, Stanley yeah. and I talked about this like what what I've started calling like uh well, you use like a week two pass system like currently where where you like look at it really quickly and then you come back again and only really after the second time have you encoded something and would you be able to kind of properly recall a cube um is that like a fair I mean I. 
summary the of first, what happens now? The first pass, well, of what happens now, yeah. This is definitely not what I was doing at, like, the 25 or exactly where I was going, yeah. level. Um, but, um, yeah, what I do now is basically, like, I trace a cube basically as fast. I can do, I can trace a cube in multi-blind basically as fast as I would do it in three-blind, pretty much. But I am, like, making the whole story, and I'm thinking about the room while I'm doing it. So, yeah. for all intents and purposes, it's I'm encoding it, like, the same way I'm going to recall it later. But uh, it's just I do it really, really fast, and I don't really review at all. I shouldn't say it that way. Yeah. I don't review yeah. at all while I'm doing that. Like, not at all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I do, like, kind of, if my focus is, like, really, really good, I'm able to, like... Similar to how I've like told you how it's helpful for three blind if you like to remember corners to stop forgetting corners, you can kind of review it while you're tracing edges. Um, and people think that's like crazy because it requires like multiple thoughts going on at yes. once, but it gets easier. And people who have like taken my advice and tried to learn how to do that will see it's like it's actually not that hard. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of hard at first, but it gets a lot easier. You can kind of do a similar thing in multi-blind, which I do. It's still something I'm not, like, super good at because it requires just, like, so much focus to do it with every single cube. Are you about but... to tell me that you think about your previous cube's story as you're tracing the current cube? Yeah. Shut up. Oh, my I don't, I don't do it all the time, but it's definitely something, like, on the first pass of a pack, I will basically, like, put down the previous cube and pick up the next cube, and I trace edges first, so I'll, like, trace out the first three edge uh, letter pairs while reviewing the corners of the previous cube. Holy crap. Okay, okay. So, like, if, if my focus is, like, good enough and I'm, like, able to, like, I don't know, do all that, then I'll okay. do that. Okay. But it's really but... hard to, like, do a lot in a full multi-blind attempt, but it can be really helpful. So the overlap here is quite specific. You're not thinking about the whole cube. You've still got corners which is what you just traced bouncing around in your head and as you're reviewing as you're tracing edges you can also like um mm -hmm. and oh my goodness this is interesting so it's just kind of like using all the time like also like putting down the cube and picking up the next cube and then tracing out the first yeah. few things like yeah. you don't want that time to go to waste especially if you're exactly. doing like 60 cubes it exactly. adds up a lot that can be used you know like if, if it takes you three seconds to pick up and put down a cube like that's a when you're tracing a cube in 10 seconds that's a very meaningful amount of time um, shouldn't take three seconds but maybe like one <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah. Um, if it's taking three seconds that's you need to work on your cube setting down and picking up the speed that's is, is this say. genuinely something you've like timed out and like because i suppose at a point this is your easiest time save is like pick up the cubes fast i forehead. remember I mean, one thing, so, like, you, I know you can definitely relate to, like, getting really obsessive about, like, optimizing all the little parts and pieces and then putting it all together. Yeah, later, you know? yeah. I the definitely bridge. had a point, I guess this was, like, um, kind of, like, beginning of the year 2019, or 2018, I, I should say. Uh, I remember specifically, like, grinding 10 cube attempts for a while, and you can see these um, in my multi-blind progression playlist. Uh, I was really stoked about this specifically because I got 10 out of 10 in 9 minutes and 58 seconds and that like beat Moscow's best ever 10 out of 10 and that was like as far as anyone knew the oh, UWR for 10 dude, cubes crap. and that was like my first ever like big like thing I did in multi-blind basically oh really? Uh, um, like, I had, like that was I hadn't gotten any uh, of course. hadn't gotten like a uh, national champ or any records in multi-blind or anything but then I got like 10 out of 10 sub 10 I was right. like, holy shit, I'm actually, like, getting kind of good relative what? to other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man. And I was really stoked about that and, like, broke down all the splits, like, every little split, like, how long it took me to trace one cube, review that cube, and, uh, and I, like, even tallied up, like, how much time I wasted picking up and putting down every other cube. And it was, like, a second and a half, second and a half on average per cube. Right. And so I was like, okay, so, yeah, for... <laughs> That's how that's how long that takes me. Maybe I could like shave a little bit of time off that, maybe. <laughs> so that was like some I just remember yeah. like like I had started considering that basically at that point. And and have and you done much more with that since then? 
or um not really no okay but okay. it just like it basically just got me like thinking about like yeah that's yeah. like 10 seconds or more 15 seconds in a nine minute and 58 second yeah. thing like just me putting down the cubes and picking them back up <clears throat> so yeah Okay. Yeah, that's why I say three sec three seconds of putting down a cube and picking it back up. It's if you're using that three seconds while like reviewing stuff, that's not a big deal. But if you're just if it just like takes you that long to like organize your cubes every time you do that, yeah, yeah, that's like something you could t save a lot of time on probably. Dude, I should actually check how long that takes me. I feel like it's probably like five <laughs> seconds for me. No cap. Um, I mean, you're probably you're probably reviewing during that time. So it's no. Like, no really you okay. give me too much credit yeah yeah okay um <laughs> i look I, it, anyway anyway we i i will not segue us into what i'm doing at the moment but i am interested in i'm gonna segue us slightly because the thought just occurred to me like so do you feel like okay here's the thought and then you tell me is like Will it get to the point where you are doing this kind of parallel trace and review for every cube? Like, so if, if you're doing ECEC, trace edges and then trace corners while parallel reviewing edges and then trace edges of the next cube while parallel reviewing corners and like go from there. Um, I think you could probably get to that point. Damn. It just would require like, like, I can definitely do it for a lot of an attempt, but yeah, I just, I really don't think I've done it for even like more than half of an attempt. Yeah. Cause it's just like, yeah. Mentally Doing, brutal, like, I'm sure. Being perfectly focused for a whole multi blind attempt is already hard enough, even if you're doing multi blind every day for like a year. Yeah. Uh, and to do it like where you have literally zero downtime in your brain at all like for a whole hour is brutal so yeah. i don't know you'd yeah. have to like you'd have to have a pretty sick brain to be yeah. able to do that you'd have to really uh watch your your food intake and like exercise and everything probably yeah. take your like, omega threes like extremely yeah yeah get really anal about all that stuff i would guess to That's be able wild. to make your brain do stuff like that so is, is this the kind of thing you've consciously tried to do or does it just start passively happening because there's a little bit of yeah. space kicking around in your brain that starts just thinking about, oh, that's what yeah, corners it's more was like. It's it's more like that. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. uh I, I can't really like quantify how much I do it because I I will just like stop doing it in the middle of a t an attempt, basically. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just I just know I'm like I definitely haven't done that like for a majority of the cubes in one attempt because right. it's just like tiring yeah. <laughs> and and are you consciously so it doesn't sound like you're consciously doing it it sounds like there's a point of fatigue where like yeah you start pushing through basically so what is is yeah. it like you know the first let's say i'm just the first two eight packs there's actually there's there's, there's a lot of sig left to go and so your brain yeah, is yeah. quite easily doing that but by the time you're yeah, on the like, first two eight packs First two eight packs, I can probably do that for pretty much all the cubes most of the time. Yeah, and that might have a lot to do with why the first two eight packs is usually a lot faster than the second two, because sure. I make the first pass stick way better just by doing that, and then the reviews end up yeah. being really fast because of that. You know, and and sorry, I'm gonna ask the same question the third time. This this is not you consciously being like, okay, I'm going to do parallelism. This is just you've got the bandwidth. For yeah, it's it, just kind of like. It's just kind of like I know I have downtime in between like moving these cubes and then like tracing out the first few edges. So I'm just like going to keep thinking about these corners because mm -hmm. I can, you know. Mm -hmm. It's Damn. yeah, it's just more like that. That's really interesting. It's not like something I sat down and I'm like, I should start doing this and like this is exactly how I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, yeah, I kind of started doing it because yeah. I knew the time was there and I was like, there's kind of like the small amount of downtime. Okay. Oh, but, but, kind of but you were like, mind, but. but but so the, the, there was the thought process of like, oh crap, I'm I'm putting down this cube. Let me think about what corners were. I wouldn't call it like a thought process. Okay. It was just like, I, I like naturally noticed mid attempt, 
Rats. that I can keep thinking about corners for longer, you know, right? Uh, while while I'm tracing out those edges, which is probably something I adapted from doing three blind, doing that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> I just started realizing, like, it's it's like pretty natural for me to, um, not how do I explain this, like. The thing that I tell people to do with three blind if they're getting corners all the time is basically like to keep reviewing and thinking about corners while you're tracing the first few edge targets. Yeah. And like, I don't know if, if this is like exactly how it is for everybody, but like I trace out like the first like four edge targets at least without actually like saying anything in my head. I'm pretty sure. It's like I trace it all out and then I'm like, da 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 da. Yeah. Like after yeah. already seeing like a bunch of it, you know? If I if I so, speak out my audio, and this is something that people have noticed, like on stream, is like I only start saying stuff by target nine or ten, and I, I you know, I'm yeah. kind of yeah, yeah. fifty seconds, so I don't know how well it translates, but it sounds like a similar experience where something's buffering or like yeah, I yeah, mean, it's kind of just like reading. So I feel like most people are like that with reading. It takes your brain to like like a second at least to like do that. Mm. So yeah, mm. yeah, it's pretty much the same thing in in multi blind. I was just like, there's basically some downtime in my brain, like a little bit of downtime in my brain, and so I just like would keep thinking about corners because yeah. I know it's useful. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> that makes sense. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's, just... it's like not easy by any means to like get that get in the habit of doing that and like to do it effectively for a lot of cubes, but yeah. it can be useful for sure. Uh... Sorry, I'm just making a note here. This 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 feels like the kind of thing I want you to come back to and talk about a little bit more. Okay, okay. Sorry, I took us on a little journey there. Um, I don't think chat's too angry about it. Uh, people seem interested oh. in general, but but okay, okay. So your process of practice up to twenty five cubes, like what? Were you doing any particular deliberate practice? Were you just grinding out attempts? Like, how many attempts were you doing a week? What was your motivation up and down or pretty consistent? Like, just like... I think it was mainly just like, I was doing every blind event, like, pretty equal amounts. Interesting. Uh, and I, I definitely wasn't doing, like, the small cube attempts, small, like, multi-blind attempts uh as religiously as i do now i hadn't like quite realized like how great that is i was doing like i think like 10 cube attempts here and there like once or twice a week or something like right. that um but it was mostly just like yeah doing i was doing like a multi-blind attempt every other day or something like that there was some point in in this timeline i don't remember when but i made a second memory palace so that i could practice more i definitely don't remember when that was if i went through this whole progression playlist and like read all the descriptions of everything i'm sure i could like find that point but i don't want to do that i and i'll forgive you for that yeah that <laughs> sounds like i think the technical term for that would be a ball egg um yeah so Interesting. So would, would you say most of your progression here, like, was just general, you were just doing large attempts kind of every second day or so, and your splits were just generally improving, and you were doing three blind as well, and, like, you were just getting faster overall? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because at that, I mean, at that point, you really don't have to, like, grind in any specific, like, way to, like, iron a bunch of stuff out. Like, you can just do solves. Like, I was probably at that point averaging, like, 40, 30 to 40 in three blind. Probably more like 40, 40 to 40, 40-ish, I guess. And just, like, I would do a bunch of three blind every day, do some four blind, five blind, other times. And, like, all that stuff just, like, makes you get faster at tracing. And, yeah. like, tracing speed is probably by a lot the thing that slows down beginners. Um and intermediate people you know mm. like yeah i don't know it's hard to like say some quantified statement about it but mm. the biggest thing people can improve on at any given time i would say is like tracing speed interesting in blind events so and that's something that just like doing solves is like 
one of the only things you can do to get better at. Yeah. And and how and would so, you like Yeah. So I mean Pausing I like... between comms is the other thing <laughs> that uh everybody can always improve at, probably. Yeah. And 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 when you say yeah. pausing between comms, is that pausing to figure out what your next com is, or is that pausing for recall or both? Any of it. Yeah. yeah. Any any pause between any elg. Yeah. Yeah. Because ideally, you're not pausing at all in between any elgs. Yeah. Right. Time but spent yeah. not turning is is bad. Yeah. Pretty much. Interesting. And and so I I mean um the 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 kind of improving on tracing particularly that's that's something that is branded obvious i i think speaking to you know because you, you you'll get a decent amount of people in chat going like how do i get sub two and it's like dude stop spending like um like one to three minutes figuring out what your letters are so you, you can actually memorize something so like um yeah. and then i i feel like um multi blind and multi blind are so interesting because there are so many different points you can define beginner i feel like um but so it, at, at, at my kind of stage like 20 cubes would would you say tracing is still like would would you stand by that statement as well like tracing is still something that like takes a lot of time or like that that's the most obvious thing to improve on maybe i mean it's hard to know i don't know because mm. like i've i think i remember from seeing because you do like your corner and edge splits uh separately and i remember seeing like like a good corner memo split for you is like nine seconds or something like yeah, that right yeah yeah with, with I, yeah, know I, slightly that, faster. I guess it's hard for me to know how much of that is from you trying to like come up with a story but like i would also that that's like pretty similar i guess to improving tracing like yeah. you're not gonna you basically can't improve your tracing speed without doing actual solves unless you're like using some program that like gives you a scramble and then you just trace it and then you do the next one or whatever but you can't really verify unless you have like the program give you exactly what it was supposed to be or whatever but i feel like at that point you might as well just be doing solves yeah yeah <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of effort um, to not do solves when basically you're doing a solve um but yeah so like coming up with all the stories like getting faster at doing that it's like you kind of just have to do solves also as far as i'm concerned <laughs> and, and and do you define uh, that as part of tracing um like coming I, mean, I guess with the i kind of was i was kind of forgetting about that part when i said that but it is also like when you're tracing in multi-blind you're coming up with a story like yeah yeah if you're doing it for multi-blind you're coming up with a story so it's you're practicing both those things whenever you do a multi-blind in any way I yeah. guess. But yeah, getting better at making stories is a pretty huge thing. And I never found myself to have much of a problem with that. And I've I realized like getting better like once I got like pretty good at multi blind and people would come to me for help and stuff, that's definitely a problem a lot of people have is like making stories. Mm. And I think it's kind of just like a creativity issue. <laughs> Cause yeah, people people are just like, I have no idea what to do with these letters. Like, how do I make a story out of these letters? And I was like, like, I all it just like was obvious to me, <laughs> I guess. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> how did you not think of this story? Like, like, well, I was just like, oh, just make a rule for this case. Like, if I ever have a verb for the first letter pair, I just have myself doing that verb. Yeah. And I was like, that's a pretty easy fix. So yeah. I've just done it ever since, you know, and I don't know if I have three nouns in a row. I just have like the first noun, watching the second noun, get on a th get on the third noun or something yeah. like that. And I don't know, like literally, obviously at my level, I ha I can have like any three words and I can make a story out of them. Like literally any three words. Um, and that just comes from a lot of practice. But yeah, I don't think I ever like. I never had a moment where I like got stuck with letters and couldn't make a story out of them mm. so that makes me think it's like a creativity thing mm. and maybe it's just because i like used to read a lot or something or... and I'm, I'm probably like inclined to agree with that like um that that definitely felt like especially trying to push 20 plus that felt like the thing that was tripping me up is i was just like 
sitting there with my mouth hanging open and being like, okay, what, how can I get these things to interact memorably? Do, do, do you feel like that's the kind of thing that you noticed improving at any conscious level or like, uh, I honestly don't have many things that come to mind trying to think of that with me. Like, yeah, I, okay. I don't think that was really a big problem for me ever. Like maybe coming up with words for certain letter pairs was a was difficult for me like but that's like pretty early stage and i i would just like at a certain point just like come up with a word that sometimes just like doesn't even make sense or like is really bad for using a certain word for a letter pair like <laughs> to this day for cq cq i use co quail and i just picture a quail that is like a co-pilot <laughs> and you just made that up in the middle of some attempt or what yeah i probably i probably made that up when i was doing like 10 cube attempts and just so I, like, funny couldn't think of anything so and, but i just like wasn't being picky about it so yeah. i just like came up with weird shit Coco. and oh my i've been using it ever since and i've <laughs> it doesn't bother me honestly it works <laughs> get that on cold yeah. pot chat oh my goodness that's yeah. so funny but it's it's also Sorry. i can totally see how that works like that's really memorable. That's quite associative. Like, use that yeah, a few times, like and I juice, feel like it slots in. It's like Juice Cow. Do you remember Juice Cow? No. When I was doing uh my my Mega Minx letter pair list, um, and I was like, I've got all the like different categories for all the different letter pair yes. sets. Yeah. And so that like makes it really really <laughs> difficult, and I couldn't come up with an animal for JC because I'd already used Jackal for like JK or something. And and I was like, I just got to start making stuff up at this point because I like, I had like, I don't know, I had like sixty animal letter pairs left, and I had feel like I used every single animal and Pokemon. Every animal in the dictionary is now in your letter list. Like, yeah. So I was just like, juice cow, juice cow is JC. That's and I was amazing. like, it was like a moment with chat too because we were like, that's gonna work, you know? Yeah. It's work really well, but it's like stupid. But you just so picture a cow great. that produces juice instead yeah. of milk. <laughs> and and did you already have cow as well? Yeah. 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 So I the, use cow these are distinct w. animals. Yeah. yeah. Damn. That's like it's that's so one funny. that I use in just like three blind. Yeah. I can't I believe I wasn't there for juice cow. Yeah. Some there might be people in your chat right now who remember juice cow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ragnar the terrible says Lameo, I thought juice cow was roided up. <laughs> Juice yeah, cow, that's actually good. No yeah. cap, that's or maybe good. maybe he was roided, and that's why he's producing juice. <laughs> the <laughs> possibilities are endless. Yeah. Oh my goodness, dude, that's so good. I find it really interesting hearing about the, re the weird crap people come up with with for letter pairs. Um, yeah. Although the, the, the most out there thing Stanley had that we spoke about was uh, he he couldn't find something good for IW and so he just made it basketball. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, that's like a, a, a good little learning experience I give to a lot of beginners when they're like struggling with a letter pair for way too long. It's like if you're struggling with a letter pair for too long, just friggin' use some shit that doesn't fit it. Yeah, and you'll yeah. learn it eventually, you know? And then like, you don't want to do that with every letter pair. Yeah. But just do it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. you're wasting so much time right now trying to figure out something for it that you could instead just use to memorize a different word for that letter pair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sounds like the the process of getting up to twenty five cubes was pretty much like just practice forehead. Like you would you were just doing hour hour long attempts. Um, practicing well, yeah, that and side. like. Ishan telling me to fix my review system uh, and make it more logical. And do, so that, yeah. do you think that was quite a significant thing for you? Because um, I've, mean, I've heard you mentioned a few times. Like, do, do you feel like you saw an efficiency increase when you changed your review I system? Don't I don't know about that. But, I mean, it was a huge thing just because, like, that kind of coming up with, like, logical review systems that are really efficient and, like, uh, that kind of thing is, like, huge and that's like one of the biggest things you do when you get really fast yeah. uh, or like good at multi-blind. Um, so that's like, that was like a huge thing to learn. It's like a huge uh, concept, but I don't know yeah. if it like 
made me improve like a lot like right at that time like it's more significant at like 40 plus i would imagine than it is at like yeah 25. yeah like, yeah like um, like i was saying like the the big things that are slowing you down when you're around like 20 ish cubes is tracing speed coming up with stories i guess and being slow at three style basically. yeah 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 yes 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 uh <laughs> i am slow and can verify <laughs> this this statement um <laughs> okay and oh man okay so okay so you hit 25 um and at some point you start going i would like i i uh my sights are set higher than nar 2 i would like nar 1 like when yeah, when, yeah. when do you I start was, going I was 33 i i want to dethrone mark was was that when you was that when you got your 25 out of 25 and you were like okay yeah pretty to, much i guess yeah i was like I was like, at this point, I did 25 out of 25 in like 56 minutes. I was like, I can probably get to 30 pretty soon. Might as well just like start gunning for NAR. Why not? You know? Yeah. Just and, like, yeah. Like at, at that point, I had that like mindset where it's like, just go for like too many cubes until it's comfortable, you know? Because why not? Yeah. And I, don't, I, I think at that point, I didn't know when my next multi blind comp was. So I was like, I don't know. Not stressed about it. And okay, so you, you you just started doing thirty three cube attempts until you could sub out with them, basically. Yeah. Okay. Except looking at the multi blind playlist, it's kind of funny because I never uploaded a video of me sub airing thirty three for quite a while, and I started trying forty two yeah. before even yeah. sub houring thirty three, and I knew forty two was just like uh, a pipe dream, you know, or not a pipe dream, but like. I don't know what the word I'm trying to think of. That would be like world pie, record, pie in the sky, kind of. Yeah, that was pie, like pie in the sky. Yeah, that was like, like before Mark had beaten Mask. I was yeah. forty-one and forty-one, so I was just like really excited to like see what forty-two cubes was like. I guess. Okay. Um, but then I went back to thirty-three. I got thirty-one out of thirty-three a bunch of times, like literally three times. I think sub hour. Third time getting thirty-one out of thirty-three. Ugh. Read description. Yeah. So that's Oh, one cool thing though was my first ever forty-two cube attempt was when my PB in multi blind was twenty-eight out of twenty-nine. So PB was twenty-seven points in fifty-five minutes, and my first forty-two cube attempt was thirty-eight out of forty-two in one eighteen. I was actually really stoked about. Wow, that. that's. But then I went back to trying accuracy thirty-three. Yeah. Then I got thirty-one out of thirty-three a bunch of times. Then I started trying thirty-seven because I was like whatever i think that was the point when i was doing 33 that was the point when i realized like don't go for like perfect accuracy it's a waste of time yeah you like know? just because because you, you're starting to get some room here like i'm looking at a 31 and 33 and 56 53 like you've got three spare minutes at that point which is like it, yeah yeah that's like a yeah, like cube it, easy it felt really comfortable for me but i just like for some reason couldn't like force the accuracy you yeah. know and i was like why can't I do this? I it like felt perfect, and I still got thirty one out of thirty three. Yeah. So that's like that's the moment when you realize like yeah, this is bad. And I'm just opening but, okay. up like your description. I want uh what overlooked the flipped edge in the scramble, and then wrong insertion during calm. So you're you're oh yeah, overlooking the DB flip probably or something like that. <laughs> Did you that see was that like and you I, I the remember disc. like a big the DB flip, dude overlooking the db flips somebody asked me about that in my chat i think yesterday and this, i was like yeah. like how do you stop overlooking db flips and i was like i remember i used to do that a lot and it just like i did it enough times to where i was just like would never like not check db basically you just you just hurt yourself and not making that mistake like i and literally can't remember last time i overlooked a flipped edge in a yeah. scramble you just eventually like become like you become perfect at seeing the whole cube <laughs> yeah so like was was accuracy because because a lot of the stuff is like road to n out of n right were you pretty hot on were you very stoked on getting n out of n like was that a big motivating factor or are you just like i want to upload videos of my multi blind progression and this is how i'm going to title it like uh how big was this for you i mean i think for the 25 cube thing I was really trying to get N out of N. 33, I was also trying to get N out of N because that would be like beating NAR at home. But 
yeah i got like really frustrated with 31 out of 33 i remember so like i said yeah that was like the point where i was like i'm not gonna beat myself up over that anymore yeah and i just yeah. started going for 37 so i was like i can get dnf two cubes and be nar so that'd be cool two yeah two okay i just yeah, actually yeah that, that 37 when i started trying 37 that's another one of those big milestones i'm remembering the first ever 37 cube attempt i did was 25 out of 37 in an hour and six minutes and then the first one i uploaded was my second ever attempt and it was 34 out of 37 in 58 minutes and that was like absolutely insane for me because like like i said my PB at the time was 31 out of 33, and then my second 37 attempt was 34 out of 37. Holy crap. So that's PB, or is and that so tied like, PB? I'm, I still no, that's PB, PB by two points, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, right, right, 29 to 31. That's yeah. sick. So I, like, yeah, I was incredibly hyped because of that. Yeah. And I think, I don't remember exactly what I started doing after that. I did have a comp after that, I guess. PBQ Reno 2017, and I tried 34 cubes. That comp went poorly by my standards, but that was like one of the first comps where I actually like didn't try the number that I can sub hour. You know, I actually tried a little bit less, but still, just like, yeah, nerves will right. mess with accuracy as well, even if you're not doing like the highest amount you want. So the best attempt I got was 20, 28 out of 34. And I think the other two attempts were like 20, 24 out of 34 or something like that, or 26. So you were, and, and, and were you hoping for, like, were you going into that comp hoping for NAR? Or, uh... Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, thought it, I thought I could do it, but at least NAR too. And I don't even know if I got it at that comp. Let me check the description, because I think it, NAR two might have changed by that time. Kale might have gotten something. I don't know. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, that was third in North America at the time. The twenty-eight out of thirty-four. Right. But it was a it was a huge comp PB, so I don't know. Couldn't complain that much. Sorry. Oh, so it was. Yeah. I missed two NAR by two minutes. So I guess Kale had twenty-two points in fifty-three minutes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Mm. So you're I not even really on the leaderboard that. at this stage still, even though you're starting to push some pretty big numbers. Yeah, I guess so. Almost NAR2. People are noticing. Okay. Okay. But still at this stage, you don't have much external pressure. Like, um, or massive expectations? I mean, like, or are people, st like when you say like, people are noticing, like, we're starting to I be like, oh crap, that's what I'm going to... myself. Okay. I had... I mean, I was also, like, at all these comps I was going to, like, pretty much always, like, going for the best attempt by far compared to anybody else. So, like, even when that starts happening, you start getting a lot of pressure just from everybody else at the comp wanting to, like, watch you and see what you get, you know? People get, like, excited to see what you get, and that adds pressure, so... So you and yeah, like the bad. other, I mean, the other big, little bit, I assume like Mark is the other person in America who's consistently doing a lot of like larger multi attempts. Like you and Mark aren't going to the same comps a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. Not really ever basically. Okay. Okay. Cause he's, he's in Minnesota. So yeah. Ah, nods in South African geography. I assume that's not close to California. Uh, it's like Midwest. Kind of. Okay. So okay i mean yeah halfway across the u.s pretty much i'm on the west coast that's a that's 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 a, a decent chunk of space i know i know enough to know that much yeah, uh, yeah. No, it doesn't you, seem that far when you're from the u.s but it's actually like a big amount of space <laughs> it's like multiple countries in some other places you know <laughs> yeah travel across like half of europe or something uh yeah. Okay, so this was sorry. I'm just I'm just putting stuff on my little timeline here. So this was train out of thirty four, and and at this point, I I mean, if if I was in your shoes, I would be like, holy crap, can I at least get like, NAR two? Like, w was it in your head to maybe try a lower amount of cubes, like a twenty seven cube attempt or something, and go like very safe just to like, get NAR two, um, or you're not too concerned with like, 
getting on. I didn't really know, like, like I think I didn't really know, like, quite how safe one can go <laughs> at right. this point. Um, and I, I basically felt like thirty four was like as safe as I as I ever would need to, and I did it in fifty five minutes. So, which is know. yeah, damn. Like, we'll we'll get to a point where I realize like I can go even safer, you know. <laughs> Um, I think my review system when I was doing things like this was basically like three pass the big amount, two pass the remainder, and I eventually started doing four pass the big amount, three pass the remainder, and now for my really safe attempts, I'm doing five pass the big amount, yeah, uh, four pass and then three pass. Uh, so yeah, that is something that's changed a lot, and there's a weird kind of evolution to that point, but it. It kind of starts that that weird little evolution kind of starts at like the forty plus area, so we'll we'll get there, I guess. Right, right, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting video pros, but it's working. Videos fine now. Okay, cool. Um, just making sure that we're still on the internet, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm just bringing my bring my thoughts towards themselves here. This is so interesting. So, I mean, you're doing like 37 cubes at home, going for 34 at Reno. Mm -hmm. Is there like a, a next step that comes to your mind here particularly? I think I had another comp at Berkeley pretty shortly after that. And I remember yes. at that comp trying, trying 36. I had like been trying 36 at home just specifically to prepare for that comp. Because I was really, at this point, starting to realize, like, the nerves game. And, like, you need to, like, basically get a result at home, like, 50 times in a row, like, really carefully <laughs> in order to, like, know that you can do that in a comp, you know? Yeah. And so I was, like, specifically only trying 36 and trying to do it as safely as I could. And, uh, and then at that comp, what did I get? 32 out of 36 or something? 28. I don't quite remember. 28, 28 out of just 36? one attempt yeah dude the, the curse the 28 oh curse. i remember at that comp yeah there was just one attempt i skipped four cubes are and you so joking actually, yeah i skipped four cubes so like four entire dnfs just from skipping rooms oh or i skipped goodness. rooms sorry i shouldn't I didn't yeah, skip yeah, four yeah 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 cubes, but i skipped Six. four rooms yeah oh wait so, so you you executed the wrong memo on the cubes yeah, yeah, and I had, like, thrown them in the pile and everything. Right. Okay. So that, like, actually could have been, like, could have been a big PR, and I blew it, basically. Yeah. So that was sad. That, and I yeah. didn't even PR that attempt. It was uh, another 22-pointer. Yeah. But, yeah, and then I went home, and I think I just started doing a bunch of 42-cube attempts after that comp. And, uh... Or, no, no, no. Okay, so this it gets a little interesting at this point. Yeah. So before that comp, I got 34 out of 36, which was PB by one point. And then, um, let me see the timing. December 4th. I want to see this timeline really quick because I'm curious now. I can't quite remember the timeline of all this stuff, but I want to know when that 36 cube attempt was officially. Uh, sorry for the delay, chat. You Berkeley. might have oh, that was for two Berkeley seconds, Hall. dude. I have oh, yeah, rooted less this little bit. Okay, I'll see you in a sec. Okay. Oh, okay. So. Uh... Uh... Okay, November 17. Oh, okay. It's all coming together. <clears throat> How's it going, chat? What up? What up? We're back. What up? Ah. Um. 
my headphones are right, so I've figured Got I've figured out the timeline. Okay. Um, Tell us a story. So, November seventeenth, twenty seventeen. I did. I uploaded a thirty-four out of thirty-six in an hour and forty-one seconds, which would have been PB and uh, would have beaten NAR for the first time ever. Why is everybody laughing? What did I miss? <laughs> Check the bud for that. Uh, I think it was just just me like saying hi to chat probably uh, nice. okay <laughs> uh but yeah so i uploaded that that was the day before this comp with one multi-blind attempt where i did 28 out of 36 so they skipped some Gosh. rooms and then after that comp i guess i kept doing 36 cube attempts and i got a uh 34 out of 36 in 57 minutes which yeah. was pb by one point and that was december 4th so like a couple weeks after that comp and then after that, um, I think I switched to, let me make sure. Um, okay, I think, okay, so in the in the description of that 30, 32 point PB, 34 to 36, right. I said, I promised to only attempt 42 cubes at minimum from now on. <laughs> but uh, that's definitely a lie. But I think I did start trying 42 cube attempts, but then I... At one point, decided I am gonna start doing the eight pack thing where I memo one memo eight cubes, uh... review eight cubes, et cetera, et cetera. And so, but but doing that with like a bulk twenty four, right? Like now I do bulk thirty two, but at that time when I started doing the actual eight pack thing, I was doing bulk twenty four. So it was like memo one through eight, review one through eight, memo nine through sixteen, review nine through sixteen, memo uh. 17 through 24 review 17 through 24 and then review those 24 and then basically two past the remainder so you're already and... organized into eight packs but you'd been doing one to four yeah i was doing five to eight and four. now you're doing yeah, your yeah. one your one pass across the whole eight pack yeah got you okay um and so this next video i uploaded was 35 out of 38 in 53 minutes which uh for reference two weeks before that i had got pb 34 out of 36 in 57 minutes and then i did 35 out of 38 in 53 minutes so this was like a huge improvement and this was the first like good attempt i got with eight cubes uh, that way and it was like basically an immediate like huge improvement dude go, I was kind of going to eight 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 packs basically yeah holy yeah, it was like Crap. It was like huge for me. And then, so I, I got that 35 out of 38 yeah. multi blind PB. Yeah. Basically beat my PB by four minutes, beat it by time by four minutes. Literated it, yeah. And so I was like, all right, I definitely should not be doing anything less than 42 from now on. Okay. So I just did 38 cubes in 53 minutes. And so, literally, the next attempt, the next multi blind attempt I did um, was 42 cubes, and I got. 41 out of 42 in 57 minutes and what? it was like mind-blowing to me uh yeah that was five days later what <laughs> five days later i did 41 out of 42 and 57 so you, you, you not got a pb on attempt. maybe like two two attempts after or something but i'm it might have been the next one i'm not sure you got a huge time pb on 38 cubes it right. was my fourth attempt ever at 42 okay so yeah, I got a huge time PB on 38 cubes. I know my first two attempts at 42 were like, first one was 38 out of 42, way over the hour. Second one was like 37 out of 42, way over the hour. Right. So I think I did like a third attempt after that 35 out of 38 attempt PB. Right. And then this was the fourth ever 42 cube attempt, and I did 41 out of 42 in 57 minutes. So there was like a massive, massive improvement, like very quickly, like literally within a two or three weeks after doing oh, the impact thing. Oh my goodness. That is ridiculous. And like, I mean, at that point, but this you're... Is like, yeah. This also marks like a huge plateau for quite a while. Like, I didn't beat this PB for literally nine months. Damn. So, yeah. And I've had I've had a few of those times now <laughs> where I get like an insane PB right. and I don't beat right. it for like way too long. Because up until now, your progress has felt... Is it fair to say your progress has been fairly linear? Like... You're grinding out attempts and you're slowly kind of improving at them. Obviously, points accuracy yeah, like... is up and down. But like, if I'm, I'm, I'm when when I say progress, I'm talking particularly about 
how many cubes you can sub hour. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Like time wise, like actual like speed per cube wise. Yeah. yeah. But like I feel like the twenty five out of twenty five was like a pretty big like point for a little while. And then yeah, but like the next one I mean I was kinda of stuck at thirty three for a little while too. Right. It wasn't like quite as big periods of time, but yeah. It was like twenty five, thirty three, then this forty two marks like a new mm. era for multi blind mm. for me. So when did you start 30? Sorry, I know we're going back in time a little bit. When did you start doing the 33 cubes? I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, I didn't write down a date. Oh, because I'm actually was, brain dead. I think it was shortly after that UCLA comp. Um, because I, I know like a, a week or two mm. after that UCLA comp, I did 25 out of 25. And that was when I started doing 33. Right. Like YOLO. Oh, okay. 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 So it would have been around May. May 2017. Okay, cool. Like okay. So it's basically like about half a year oh, to go there's, from... there's one thing we holy crap, yeah. There's one thing we kind of forgot about. Uh I I did my first like actual ever NAR attempt at uh Northwest Championships Ooh. that summer. And I it was one attempt at that comp and I tried Close. 33 cubes, even though I had like my best attempt ever on it was 31 and a 33 barely sub hour. <laughs> and I tried that. 33 at that comp and i got like i this might have dnf or no, it was dude you got 20 out of 33, out of 33 yeah. yeah 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 so that was like abysmal and i was really sad oh, i didn't dude. even podium yeah, <laughs> yeah max hilliard max hilliard won with like 14 out of 16 or 12 out of 16 riley or <laughs> oh riley won yeah yeah oh max got northwest champ because he actually lived uh, in the got so riley, you. okay riley won i guess yeah so oh, 2017 okay so but but this the, you you were kind of this was a bit of a hail mary if you had never read like you weren't confidently yeah, sub hiring so, yeah. 33 yeah but it was still pretty like, frustrating i was like i think i'd like nar is possible so i like want to go for it basically yeah yeah but i was still like really bummed that i did that bad yeah <laughs> you know? and it looks like you hit really the hour limit enough. basically yeah it was a horrible attempt <laughs> all in all i forgot so much stuff damn so sad. and i like drove all the way to portland with a friend for that comp so it made it extra brutal damn. yeah that's like a 12 hour drive 10 or 12 My goodness hours. dude that's that's rough that's rough and and i mean I yeah. did win four blind and five blind, so that helped. Okay, yeah, yeah. I I, I see Graham Siggins out here. Ah, oh, Rohes are doing square one. That's uh they they hadn't hadn't gotten into the ground. Oh yeah, he was at yet. that comp. That was yeah. when he was like square one god, yeah. Oh damn. Oh, Chris Olsen was here yeah. as well. Kevin Hayes was winning everything. Dude, this is actually such a oh my big goodness. Comp. Yeah. Dude, Enoch Enoch was there. That was when I met Enoch. What? Is so Sean won time. three blind? Dude, this, this oh, yeah, feels gotta, actually like a bit of a just just looking at yo Michael Chai, welcome in, dude. Just just cool looking at who's winning this stuff, like it feels like such a throwback. Or oh, at, at least for yeah. me, like if, if times, I think about dude, yeah. coming in, like who are the big names? Like Chris Olsen, Kevin Hayes, Ishan, Kit, um, Aiden Bartlett on Skew, you on the blind stuff for a hairstyle. Like there's just a lot of like names that are newbie. I remember Luke, Luke Tixon like destroyed multiple events at that comp too. He did really well. Wait, really? That was the first, that was basically the first time I heard about Luke Tixon. Did he win any comps? He or didn't or win any events. Different? Maybe he's on podiums. Oh, he might've got, I think he got like multiple uh, Northwest champs. At uh, least at that comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he's second three by three. Oh yeah, he's on a lot of podiums. Okay, okay. Yeah, I definitely remember him having a bunch of awards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's okay. He's jeepers. Yeah, he was on a lot of podiums at that film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I mean, it sounds like the the really the period like May to December that six months six seven months was like a big period of improvement for you going from like that that twenty five out of twenty five multi blind yeah. up to that forty one out of forty two like um yeah i like at home PB. i bumped my pb up like 150 per percent or something <laughs> and and i mean just just for me at the stage i'm at like 
going from where I am now to like sub houring 40 cubes. Okay, so I, I, I mean, you obviously study better than me. No, significantly better if you're getting a 25 out of 25. Like, still, that feels like phenomenal improvement in like six months. The 41 or the 40, yeah, the 41 out of 42 felt like probably a huge fluke. I don't know how okay. that happened. Interesting. Because I, I didn't even get close to beating that PB for like a really long time. Interesting. Okay, so there's, there's a, maybe a bit of an anomaly here. Like we're, uh, yeah. right, yeah, right. We're, we're, we're kind of comparing peak performance. Uh, but that was like, that was so crazy for me. Dude. At that point, I think the only people who had gotten a better result than that were like, I think Mark, Mark had done 42 out of 42. Camille had done 42 out of 42 and Moscow had done his like 49 out of 50 or whatever. That was UWR for a super long time. And maybe Shivam. I don't remember what he had had at that point. Yeah. I was going to ask about Shivam. Yeah. But so I, I, I mean, you're really playing with the big dogs with, with the 41 out of 42 at that stage. Yeah. That, that video like kind of put me on the map, I think. Okay. Okay. It's so interesting coming in, you know, because I, I only have hindsight. So, you know, I, I, I know that we're talking about like the progression of the person who now holds the world record, like, but yeah, it's people at that stage wouldn't have necessarily like, I mean, obviously at the comps you're going to people are like, whoa, the dude is doing a lot of cubes, but would you say people like were really paying attention before that 41 out of 42 or was that the like, oh crap, game's people. getting kind of good. I think people had like seen that I was like improving somewhat quickly, but uh, yeah, at this point, there's like a ton of people mm. that mm. were like, "Whoa, this guy has world record contender now!" Yeah, yeah, because that was obviously when when world record was still forty one points. Yeah, it 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 would be like you know if if Kristoff was was about to become you know the next multi blind god like. The, the the comparison I'd yeah. almost make is if, if they suddenly yeah, it, posted it really 63 is. out of 64, then people would go like, oh, crap. You know, like the... Well, I guess it's basically just like... like Because this 41 out of 42 doesn't even beat that, the world record at the time. Oh, so it's true, basically okay. just like... That, yeah, that, it's like if... Uh, a good if, like 60 or 62. Like a, a 58 out of 60 or something. Right. And they're like, oh my god, right. he can get world record. Yeah. So yeah. that wasn't really a world record contender after getting yeah. this like i almost beat world record at home it's like yeah, no, yeah. it's like a yeah. huge anomaly zero chance of beating right. that right right because okay to be fair 63 out of 64 would be like uwr so that's a bit yeah uh yeah a bit too big okay okay um and and i mean you'd spoken about talking to like because because this this definitely feels i i, I don't know I'm I'm kind of looking at this being like, oh wow, a lot happened in these six months. Is there like so I'm kind of wanting to dive into like what these six months look like for you. Is there like a better stopping point for us, would you say? Would you be like, oh wait, crap, in like February twenty eighteen this huge thing happened? Um Well one thing I just remembered that's kind of funny is uh obviously I was like really, really excited about getting that forty two cube attempt and uh getting such a good result on it that I was like really, really looking forward to next time I got to compete in multi-blind. Right. And that next comp, <laughs> oh, I no. tried 42 cubes, even though like the best thing I had ever gotten since that 41 out of 42 was 37 out of 42. But I still tried 42 at that comp on all the three attempts. And I like absolutely shat the bed. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was like um, super depressing. Oh my I goodness. Once again, drove, drove to UCLA from San Francisco to have that comp. And it was like, that was like the new low point of depression from a comp I've ever had. Damn. So like, um, we're, uh, like how, how hard did this stuff hit you? Um, because I, I think probably at least in my mind, I've focused more on the like hype from good at home attempts than the bleakness from like bad competition. I mean, there's times like, where... There's definitely times where I get like so bummed about a comp that I basically don't do multi blind for like two months yeah. or something like that, you know? Yeah. I just like, yeah, I get like really discouraged about it. And I'm just like, I'm just going to do four blind and five blind and three blind, I guess. 
because you're also kind of in parallel you're you're getting good four blind five blind results like we're focusing on multi-blind but when i put yeah. up these comps like you're you know winning four blind five blind a lot well yeah actually also at the use that same ucla comp that was like the first time i really was contending for five blind nar and i barely choked it like uh i got a one attempt that was sub nar and i had did i had missed one slice during the solve and so I was also really sad about that. Oh my goodness! Said, like, one more thing that you're really bummed about. And then actually at that comp, Mark Wojnarowski takes five land NR instead. Oh no, in NR average oh, yeah. it looks yeah. like. In sorry, NAR, NAR average. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Oh, my that wasn't dude, really like little. that wasn't that wasn't actually a thing at the time though. Like the oh the average big blind records. Means, okay. Big big blind means weren't weren't recognized like they didn't have a leaderboard really right okay so that that was kind of a, an often the fact thing that it got recognized yeah and he he like wasn't even going for it he was just like i think he like hadn't been practicing big blind at all for a really long time and he just like got three three successes that just goes to show how it was like not competitive at all yeah yeah damn okay so i i mean like at at this stage it's starting to get you know pretty sorry do you want to say something no cool uh good chat um so <laughs> at, at this stage um you, you're starting to get pretty freaking good I, I, like who are you talking to and like what is like what is motivating you like are you going for records are you more motivated by your own improvement um or are you like because you also did at some points you did some like co-streams with people and that kind of thing like um oh yeah I mean, I don't know. I was just really like getting PBs. <laughs> yeah. But I was also like, it's it's really hard to ignore when you're like actually getting like to the point where you can get a certain record or whatever. Like obviously when I I like set my sights on NAR when I when it was even like remotely like seemed like I could get it. Yeah. And just like was gunning for it and I did the same with world record. Like definitely jumped the gun on both those things by a lot. <laughs> Cause I was just like, I want to get this record. Yeah. Like it was a huge yeah. motivator, but I've also always just been like super motivated by getting PBs. Like, yeah. You definitely, I, I mean, even just watching your speed run, you seem like a PB guy. Um, yeah. I'm a yeah. big fan of getting PBs. Yeah. Yeah. And but certainly you never like... want a PB by too much. That's another <laughs> thing that we want to teach the chat. You never want to PB by too much. And this 41 and a 42 right here, I think I PB'd by too much. Yeah. Because I didn't PB after that for nine months. You should have gone up to like 36, 36 learned, points or something. Hey, like, and then you. Yeah, I learned a lesson that happened. day. <laughs> that lesson was never PB by too much. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, um, I would like to say I've learned that lesson, but so my, my last, just a random a random anecdote my last pb was at a comp in march where i got eight out of eight um i still have not beaten that pb um <laughs> i mean i feel like you're not really you're you're motivated your motivation is not just to like beat that pb you're like grinding for like yeah much better you know yeah it's like yeah you're grinding the smart way <laughs> <laughs> i was grinding just like the short-sighted way just because I... I was just like I don't know. I'm a lot more yeah. motivated just by like trying to get a PB as soon as possible, <laughs> and like just like doing solves to like turn my brain off yeah. for a little bit. I think that's like one thing that motivated me a lot with cubing, or I don't know if I, I would call it motivation, but just one reason I cubed so much. Like I put in a stupid amount of hours every day mm. for a really long time, and it's I think just because like cubing is like kind of a meditation, like gets my brain off of anxiety basically mm. Mm. and i've definitely had problems with anxiety yeah. so yeah it's just kind of like a meditation everybody like meditates with different kinds of things and just like brainlessly doing solves for a very long time yeah it helps me <laughs> and especially especially in a way that takes your full attention because you can grind three by three and yeah. still be thinking about something in the background but like you're yeah. doing multi have you on on that have you found that like anxiety will interpose itself when you're trying to do like an attempt like this or, or has it very much been like an escape from like anxiety and intrusive thoughts for you? 
for a long time it was like really maybe maybe more so an escape from anxiety because i was just so motivated and not like thinking like i didn't have the brain space for anxiety mm. at, in general i mm. think but um kind of more so like that but also yeah like the this last like month or so where i've had a lot of anxiety like i mean uh, for example a lot of my anxiety is caused because i have like i've been having a lot of heart palpitations and like oh, these goodness. skipped, heart, skipped yeah. heartbeats and like i get like tachycardia because apparently i have a heart arrhythmia which like is genetic in my family and um it's like really terrifying sometimes and that'll just happen like during an attempt and yeah. if i'm in like really like anxiety mode which i was for like two months in a row or more so basically like basically ever since i got covid like my anxiety got way way worse mm -hmm. um and there was just times where i'd have like panic attacks out of nowhere but like specifically yeah doing multi-blind if i ever started having like heart palpitations that is like super distracting because that's, that's like, like the kind of anxiety that just like doing solves i can't really just ignore yeah so yeah. that's kind of a problem crap. is is that like uh wolf keepers um or, or, also i don't know how much of this you would want to discuss off stream so if, if you want to just go back to talking about solving plastic toys on the internet we obviously can but um like no, fine. is 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 that the kind of thing this like arrhythmia vibe is that a like medical concern or a medical anomaly if that makes sense like well, your heart just randomly um, skip beats and it says whatever. Um, I mean, I know that both my dad and my dad's brother have it, and they're both old. So fair, okay. They made it. Yeah. Um, my uncle says he's had some problems with it, and there's times where like, uh, he's like weakened by his heart, like going crazy, right? Like beating too much, basically. But um. Yeah, for me, I think, like, I was having heart palpitations, maybe because of COVID, maybe just because it, like, is something that happens to me. Yeah. But um, it was getting worse, like, steadily because I was getting more and more anxious about it. It's like a total vicious cycle. That's what I'm thinking, is it? Yeah. And yeah. You can actually, like, stress will cause you to have more. There's, like, these things that probably, like, I think everybody gets. They're called preventricular pre contractions also known as PVCs. And they're basically what most people describe as like a flutter or like a skipped heartbeat. Yes. It's basically, it's not really a skipped heartbeat, but it's like your heart's beating. And then there's like a time where it's like, and it beats like one way too quick. Yeah. And then there's like a pause because your heart has like, has beaded. It's like out it of sync. Like compensate. Yeah. yeah. And so it feels like your heart stops for like a second and it's terrifying. Yeah, like, it feels like crap. a thump. <laughs> It feels like a thump when it comes back yeah. and it's like really unsettling, but oh, those goodness. are really normal as long as you're not having like too many of them. Yeah. And too many of them is basically like one in 10 heartbeats or more. Cool. And so, yeah, that's like definitely so freaky. I'll, when I heard about that, I was like, oh yeah, that's not that much. Like, or uh, I've, I've definitely not had that many, Yeah, but there's actually a point where like, if I get like really, really anxious, I'm noticing them like, on average like once a minute which is actually getting into scary territory right. Right. and then there's like times when i'll have like one and then literally like five seconds later it'll happen again and then i'm like oh my god i'm dying I'm gonna yeah. Have a heart yeah 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 but this it's like sick. it has to be literally like throughout every day of your life like on average one in ten so yeah i don't know yeah basically being stressed out can make it way way worse which is oh my goodness and it's, it's especially like as it's happening, you get more anxious and it's just like, like a, yeah, yeah, um, exactly. a self-reinforcing cycle. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. But I totally, oh my goodness, dude, that is, that sounds stress, like, yeah. Stress and anxiety can do insane things to your body. And I've been really learning all about that the last month or two. <laughs> Damn, dude. Like so many things I did not believe. Like, I've had anxiety for a really long time, and I did not even just know to the extent, like, what stress can make you feel physically. Like, body pains. Yeah. It's weird. Sounds kind of brutal. And it yeah. 
makes yeah makes sense why sitting for an hour focusing on something would would get harder like any yeah. of this stuff sounds like a just complete nuke on on especially trying to do a, a multi-blind attempt at the level that you're trying to perform at now yeah but i think maybe getting getting back into multi-blind can be good to try to like heal from that anxiety mindset because mm. i have to i need to like relearn how to shut out all the thoughts that are irrelevant to the attempt, you know, mm. and that's like something you have to get really good at. Mm. And it's really hard for me, at least <laughs> probably hard for most people. Yeah. Just like shut out the brain chatter and not pay any attention to it. Like just, yeah. Silencing your mind. Hugely. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the huge, huge difficult parts about getting good at multi I would say. Would you say so? Like, have you, I mean, maybe, it, yeah. maybe when you get to like a really high level, specifically like, uh, like sure. over okay. maybe like 40 plus cubes where you get to the point where like uh losing your train of thought like more than a few times is probably going to ruin a, an attempt yeah you know? right that makes sense yeah. okay because because generally i would say i haven't struggled with going off track in a multi-blind attempt what what does happen uh that i seriously need to address is like when i'm executing I've, I was doing a lot more comm review at a point and I would be executing and be like, oh crap, this is a bad comm, you know, um, like um, mid attempt and like getting, getting stressed out about bad algs. Yeah. During yeah. yeah. Genuinely. And I'm just like, objectively, it's so freaking brain dead because I could be using like the least optimal three style in the world and just pausing less and still be sub 40 execution which is what i need to be but like it's it's that experience of the like intrusive thought and going off your train of thought that is like yeah drives a truck across your like multi-blind attempt yeah <laughs> okay yeah so i i can definitely see how like yeah your your margin your margin for like uh there's a word where you go off something that I can't think of right now. Um, error. Error. I was no, I like variance. It's something like variance. Um, deviation. Yes, let's go. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. for for, for was, deviation. Like it just, it just came to my head. When ah, I said it first. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Um, gets gets so thin. It sounds like. Ooh. Oh man. Okay, so who 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 are you talking to at the moment? Like, are you um sorry? I, I, and by at the moment, sorry, I've just massively segued us. Um, I'm talking to Dennis in your chat. By the way, that's what, what? Dennis. Can you please stop distracting my interview guest? <laughs> this is very. Weird. Did I just write my? I just wrote my email wrong. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's move swiftly onward. <laughs> Yeah. So like, um, during this like grind from kind of twenty five to like forty two sub hour, are you are you starting to talk to my, like Mark Boynowski at this point? Are you like talking to Ishan? Like who who's kind of in your like community that you're like theory crafting with, or or are you doing this quite like? Uh, are are you sharing your improvement with people or? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. I've always like shared my PVs a bunch, but um, hmm. I mean, I think at this point, so like, there's this uh, Facebook group chat, like messenger chat that I've been in, just like with multi-blind people. And when I was invited to it, it was just Shivam, Mark, Mascow, Camille, uh, I snap. I think that was it. It was basically like all the people who like could do like 40 plus and I think, or maybe like 30 plus or something. And they invited me to it when I had gotten like, I don't know, maybe, I, oh, I think they invited me to it when I was like, when I did like a 38 out of 42, like my first 42. Yeah. Attempt. Yeah. But so I was like, just talking to them a bunch, I think it's so like anybody in that group chat. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. But Made I mean, I was definitely cut. still talking to Ishan, Ishan, and like that whole crew a bunch too. I've yeah. always been in this group chat with, like, some people have dipped in and out of it, like when they stop cubing or whatever. But 
it was like Ishan, Neil, Max, Hilliard, uh, Angelo Zhang, who had three blind world record momentarily. Um, Josh Weimer, who has a YouTube channel you might have seen. He did like a good advanced M2 tutorial, which you might have seen. I um, know the name. But I would talk to all of them a lot. Okay. okay. But and a lot of them, sometime yeah. after this, they all kind of stopped cubing so much. I think Sean had actually already quit cubing by this time. So, I, I, mean, I mean, one of the things we discussed kind of prior to uh, on, on Discord was, was like, Ishan and his contribution to, like, your blinding and the blind community in general. Like, do you want to, do you want to just, like, riff on that? Because certainly for me coming in, Ishan is the kind of person I think I'm mostly familiar with, like, seeing him in these, like, eight-man relays kind of thing. But yeah. um, <laughs> starting, in, starting in 2019, like, he's not a name that you hear a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of sad how it just will like. <laughs> if you're if you're ever like really too focused on getting a world record or something, just think about how Ishan had three blind world record, and now like everybody just like doesn't know. Who <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, which is shocking to me because he's like, yeah, he's like one of the biggest like cubing inspirations I had. Damn. Um, but I'm I'm actually I don't know if you know who Brian's son is on YouTube. Yes, he's like kind of a kind of. A, kind of a young buck who's like his youtube channel's been blowing up yeah, a little bit yeah and he made a community post recently that i'm pulling up shortly uh he posted a screenshot of a it was a post on cubix's friends i think on facebook and let me find it uh it was about it was basically like ishan saying something about like <laughs> oh my goodness so brian brian's son is always like uh uh, like advocating for all these crazy algs. It's like, yeah, like the, the, the objectively optimal stuff. I haven't been following this a lot, yeah. but and this kind of like was born with a Sean, honestly. The the whole objectively optimal meme, right. and it was always a meme, which is the funny thing. Like he was like always tongue in cheek about it, but also still like definitely trying to optimize the crap out of everything. Right, and and like pretty much agree with everything he was trying to optimize. There was and like specifically some... in a blind context, is that correct? Yeah, specifically in the blind context. There was stuff that was like outside of the blind blind context, which was definitely like tongue in cheek. And like <laughs> anybody with a sense of humor knows he was like just trying to like be be his crazy self. Where he was like, I specifically remember there was the West Coast Cubing tour, mm. which was in 2018, which just is like he, a bunch is of he the guy who's like, I'm convinced that this like <laughs> This S slice U perm is like sub sub eight or whatever. Oh, yeah, sorry, so sorry, keep telling the story. He was like, so like all those like big top notch cubers were at that whole tour, like Kevin Hayes and Felix and Jay, like a bunch of people made trips out to do yeah. that whole tour. Yeah. And there was like a specific day when I remember Ishan was like bugging the crap out of Felix, trying to like show him the truth of the RUS U perm <laughs> on like big cubes. Yeah. Like specifically, he wanted. Felix to pick it up on big cubes. Fun fact: Felix uses that alg now what? on three by three. Oh my goodness, we did <laughs> but, it, Reddit. Um, on three by three. Ishan is also Ishan's also the one to thank for the both the Wire brothers using the R B R U B D alg for the A perms. <laughs> like I don't know if you know those those algs. I don't. I just use the com, R, R prime R prime B prime R into an eight mover. Both both the wires. I'm pretty sure at least one of them. Pretty sure both of them use that. That is so for, funny. Like, this this A perm, and I remember seeing him do it on that finals at the Worlds 2019. And, uh, <laughs> and yet there are still people who like say like this is objectively optimal like hoo ha bullshit basically. <laughs> but, like don't fall for the objectively optimal uh, propaganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, that's so funny. Like the whole the whole like objectively optimal thing has always just been kind of like I don't know. Like it's, a... I think it basically started to just like deliberately be like like a sweaty nerd about it. Right. And it's like we all knew it was like kind of stupid to be like It's like a bit of a meme about it. It's the yeah. sense I get. Yeah. 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 But also like yeah, Ishan did a lot of that stuff. 
which was definitely like him just trying to be funny but also like he definitely believed in some of this stuff like the ruf right. perm right i don't know it it's hard to like explain the lore for all of this dude will, will, was, will you just check your really um check your mic quickly i'm so sorry to interrupt is your is your fancy one still red light on oh yeah it is okay can you hear okay yeah 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 it's good i, I think my yeah. internet might have just yeah. been choking <laughs> i just okay. wanted to talk you oh, yeah i just wanted you to talk really closely at us <laughs> dude i went on a huge you. tangent just talking about that no 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 no, no, no stuff, dude we're, but... we're, we're not done with that we're not done with that um yeah. so i sent so... i sent you a link to the brian sons community post sick and on Discord. i don't i don't know exactly the context of this facebook post but uh I just know that Sean tagged Philip, Philip and Sebastian Weyer because I know he was constantly trying to convince them of all these, like, basically all these algs he found because he was, like, so well-versed in ENS slice algs for 3Blind that he was, like, showing them all this shit for, like, OLL and F2L and PLL, and they were actually, like, believing in a lot of it. <laughs> and Ishan in this post, tags Philip and Sebastian and Philip responds to him and says, S and E are the future of CFOP. Oh my goodness. And then somebody responds, what's the story slash joke behind that? And then Neil responds, it's not a joke. And then Keon, who is also in all this <laughs> shit, Keon Mansour, is so he's like, good. or you can do Ruse, you can do Ruse sideways, right? Oh and Ishan's like, yes, we are still analyzing that method. Good preliminary <laughs> results so far. Ishan like actually like looked deeply into doing Rue with like I just bought the post up on screen. Just a Z rotation off, so you're doing a bunch of like R and S or R and E slices instead. Uh which is hilarious. But yeah. That, that screenshot's so legendary. And so I just like it was a huge throw throwback for me, him posting this. How serious like, Okay. How serious so like, is all of this? That right last now? that last comment that he left is like obviously tongue in cheek, but he actually like spent a lot of time looking into sideways Rue. And I think it was just because he found it fun and he probably didn't really believe it was going to happen. Right. But like he had like a sliver of hope, maybe. <laughs> but for the most part, it's like just kind of like tongue in cheek. Right. And there was like a lot of that. But a lot of people got like really upset by the whole objectively optimal thing because there was like more recently, right? Is, is that what you're talking about? Because there's been, I mean, no, like years ago, oh, it's, really it interesting. Had started. Like okay, it's having a renaissance. Because there's some people like who would get like a little too pushing pushing it down other people's throats like and like shaming them for not using the algorithm that right. they like thought was the best or whatever but like like i might have been uh guilty of that but i feel like if like when it happened it was kind of like people would ask me like what algorithm should i use for this and i'm like you should use this and then they're like what about this and i'm like it's worse because <laughs> it is <laughs> and i'm like like i could show you why and yeah. they're like well i like it because of this and i was like well you asked me for the best elk so i gave you it so yeah, uh, yeah. i don't know why you're like trying to argue with me about what elk to use i feel like you you, ha you have a few of those like interactions on your stream as well as like you know yeah like what what, uh, <laughs> what? great what's yeah, your opinion I've, on this i disagree with your opinion I, I cared i cared way more about that for a long time and i think like hyper optimizing all that stuff is like not that big of a deal <laughs> but right. it kind of makes sense for three blinders specifically to do it if you're like trying to get three blind world record at this level yeah but even then like it's not even a big deal like you yeah. can improve so much more still just by like grinding out yeah. memo and not pausing and getting your turning to be a lot better and stuff we we but, had this conversation i feel like i can't remember if it was in your stream or mine but kind of on the topic of floating i think i don't want to correct me if i'm putting words in your mouth or don't either way um but it was it was the idea that like like floating is great but like the time saved from learning like floating is not massive compared to like get really yeah. like get pause this execution like make sure your <laughs> your basic comms are all really good like well yeah i definitely that. wouldn't i wouldn't say to anybody that you that like it's bad to learn floating but uh like floating is uh objectively good but that depends on how good you get it floating <laughs> yeah like yeah like i there are a ton of people who like want to learn floating like so early and 
like they just i think a lot of people just like don't it's overrated yeah, basically a lot of people don't realize like let's say i'm let's say i'm 20 global and i were to go from never floating at all to full floating and doing every single floating alg perfectly perfectly i would probably drop my global average just from that floating 0.5 at best damn at best really from 20 to 19.5 because you have to like think about every time you float so for one your opportunity to float if you're not doing like full 2e 2e or any 2e 2e which most people aren't going to do any 2e 2e your opportunity to float is like one in three solves or something and so those one in three solves you're doing sometimes it also depends on the kind, like how many floating outs you have to do because yeah. you're using a suboptimal buffer. So, like, very rarely you're going to be able to float where it's just one UB alg or something like that. Those are like nice floats where you're actually right. going to save, like, it's just one second. three cycle outside the buffer kind of thing. Like, like you're saving a full yeah. pump. Ideally, like, if you have one floating alg and it's a good floating alg, you're going to save like 0.8 or one second, maybe. Right. Assuming that, that there's no memo time memo time detriment as well, like yeah, yeah. Hopefully not. Yep. There shouldn't be. Okay. But um, if you have instead like uh, you float UB and do five UB algs instead of six UF algs, that's gonna save you like point one or point two seconds. Right. <laughs> right. Because you're because losing time like, on everything past like the first alg, basically. Yeah. Like like UB is slower than UF, basically. Yeah. Like on yeah. average, you know. Yeah, it's not that much slower. Maybe it's maybe I'm overestimating how much slower it is, but uh, still, you get the point. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like, and then every like that's the second best edge buffer, <laughs> and so yeah, it's right. like arguably not even worth it to float like all the e slice buffers, you know, uh, at least in like a lot of cases. So, yeah. And there's like people who average like 30 on three blind who are like, I'm going to learn full floating now. Right. And just, it's like, you know, full floating once you have learned how comms work, but like learning full floating is getting like perfect recall and perfect execution in everything yeah. to the point where it's actually worth it. Yeah. <laughs> like anybody who knows how three style comms work knows how to do a comm from any buffer. It just yeah. takes a while to figure it out. And that's like a whole sliding scale, but yeah. Anyways, that's yeah. my rant on it's like <laughs> It's like, get, like, before you think about floating, get your normal UF three style or whatever, UFR maybe, I don't know. Like, to the yeah. point that full floating would need to be for it to be worth it kind of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Get good first, basically. And this is all yeah. in the context of, uh, of three months um, specifically. Three blind, yeah. yeah Multi blind, yeah. I think floating actually helps a significant amount, and that's mainly just because of memo. Interesting. Because your memo will save. Well, yeah, and and it like compounds with how many reviews you're doing of all those. Right. So that's interesting. It, it it saves a pretty tiny amount of time in execution, right. but in memo, it's actually kind of significant. Yeah. I would think. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I had something really profound and insightful to say, uh, and it's flown right out of my head. Oh, uh, I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was me all the time. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's I just, uh, the majority of my life. I just spilled beer on my face. So oh, nice. We're about the same intellectual level right now. <laughs> it's a bit of a cake on the moment right there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's why they call it a beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness all right um well <laughs> that's the clip chat that's that's the stream there we go <laughs> <laughs> oh man dude how much how much gas do you have in you at the moment i'm loving it i'm conscious we're we're fast approaching one your time and we haven't even talked about like we've we've hit the 42 barrier basically um yeah what's uh i should probably wind down pretty soon <laughs> i'm down i'm down to go for like 20 more minutes or something yeah 
but, but I I do feel my eyes getting the getting a little tired. heavier, getting a little heavier. Just yeah. throw a beer in them, dude. Yeah, dude. yeah. Uh, I can't think of a beer, an eye related beer pun quickly enough. I don't even know if one exists. Okay, yeah. so I mean, I mean, let's um, let's let's talk fifty and maybe even sixty then, and 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 see how long this stuff takes. So like. You break 40, you still don't have NR. Oh, wait, 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 wait. When in this timeline is Ishan's faked NR? Have uh, we gotten to that yet? Uh, Less. I think that might have been like fall of 2018. Okay, okay. There Do was, you... I'm pretty sure that was it. Because, so like, um, or no, fall of a uh, 2017. Sorry. Uh, um, because that was like the year we just covered. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just did 2017. Yeah, and so he was always like really just grinding out um, uh, three blind, and he was always talking about how he eventually wanted to just like grind multi blind until world record, and I believed him. Like I was like. I know his like drive and I know he can like work an event and just like break it down and figure like, it out and get he really, could do really it kind of thing. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was like, it's just a matter of time if he just decides to do it. It's kind of how I feel about Stanley. Right I was going to ask <laughs> like, that. Yeah. Cause who but, did, when did you say, when did you talk about Stanley being able to just like, that was on the, uh, the Greg. Uh, yes, 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 like, yes. The head to head. Yeah. You're just yeah. like, if Stanley decided to do multi blind, he would just, like smack all your guys' yeah. cheeks around. Yeah, probably. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, you were like waiting probably. for Ishan to do it. Um. And yeah, then... yeah. I mean, I was just always like, if he did, he would. Yeah, probably get way better than me really fast. But it's kind of similar to Stanley again. That like, I'm not like really hopeful that he will. <laughs> like, because yeah, Stanley has said for a long time like that he wants to like. I mean, I don't know if he's ever really said that, but yeah, he'll he'll basically grind multi blind for like a month and then stop for like six, you know. Right. And that's kind of right. like Ishan. Ishan would be like even less than that, but yeah. uh, he was always also saying that he was going to practice it in secret, and not tell anybody about it, and then get a world record like at a comp and excite everybody basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that was perfect uh, build up for when. Everybody, like all my homies, like basically Max, Angelo, Neil, Ishan, Josh, they all, oh, and, and Jeff Park, he was also part of that whole crew. They're yeah. basically like all these dudes who all improved at three blind, like at pretty similar rate and got really good. And like Jeff and Josh and uh, Angelo were all from Texas and um, they had this whole Texas blind comp that they organized. And then Neil and Sean both flew out there. Oh, and Riley Wu also flew out there. And that's where they did like a bunch of these relays and stuff. I think Max got his first ever three blind world record there. And uh, Angelo, wait, I might have the timeline wrong. I think Angelo got world record there. And then Angelo quit right after that comp. <laughs> but nice. yeah, at that. <laughs> quit all your head. Comp, I can respect that. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. At that comp. Um, yeah, Ishan basically like faked multi blind NAR. <laughs> and uh, it was 35 out of 37. This was when uh, NAR was still 32 points right. by Mark. And he faked a 33 pointer. And they basically like filmed just the ending of it. And they had like put a bunch of cubes on the table with only two unsolved and just like showed him solving the last one with yeah. like a judge holding it. They made it look really real. And then he like puts it down and he gets up and everybody's like freaking out counting the cubes and it totally looked like super legit. Oh my uh, and they all like told me about it and they kept the they kept the jig going for like days, dude. <laughs> and I was like, and and they even like lied to Mark about it too. They didn't even like want to prank Mark, but Mark was the one who's like allegedly lost his NAR. Yeah. And so they were, like, were they specifically the pranking you because they knew you were like yeah you were but I think they forgot to. They forgot to like prepare Mark for it, so they just had to lie to him too. Because I like went and talked to him before they did. Right. 
and uh, oh my goodness. And yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened because <laughs> I was like, why isn't it on WCA like uh, CubeComps.com or whatever? It was like where they used to upload results. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and they're like, dude, I'm an idiot. Like I brought my scorecard with me, and they hadn't like entered the results yet, and they might have to like nullify the result but i'm trying to get it figured out and so for they had that story for like Correct. days to explain why it wasn't ever put on cubecom oh and that's and amazing i also remember like for days after like me like hitting up a sean like damn dude so you got to tell me like what you've been doing this whole time like, I need to know, like what's your pv like yeah. what's your plan yeah. now and all this stuff because now he's gone he public was... with it you're like he's gonna, he's gonna share all the yeah. all the source he was like blowing all the smoke up my ass basically and then eventually they just like they just told me that it is wasn't so real good. but i basically i had to like i had like an existential crisis from that basically For, dude dude I yeah like, i mean I, so you told the story once before on the corner cutter podcast which is how i how i snuffed it out and i was like dude if that happened to me i would be brutalized like obviously it's hilarious playing but like what 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 like what was your mental I mean, like after teaches, that? It teaches, it gives you like uh, a little glimpse into like ego death and like, <laughs> like what it would be like to be like a monk or something. Yeah. Like you have to just like yeah. let go of all wants and desires or else uh, you'll never be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it is a kind of a good, that kind of experience is kind of a good lesson to just like not get too consumed in uh, those kinds of goals and just to like, Really make sure that you're cubing because you think it's fun. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah a lot of people get like way too uh, caught up in just getting a record. And yeah. And they don't realize at any point some freaking prodigy could just show up out of nowhere and destroy you and yeah. make you feel worthless. <laughs> so you don't want your worth tied up in that shit. Yeah. It's uh, not very healthy. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like it's such an interesting, because on the one hand, it's just a really funny story, but on the other hand, exactly like you say, like, you can you can really, um, you know, make my worth as a person equal to, you know, this random external achievement I have, like getting a world record or whatever. And like, the, it's the, hard not to when you're putting like hours and hours yeah. and hours of every day of your yeah. life for, yeah, into something. Exactly. It's hard to not take exactly. it personally when someone just destroys you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, especially when it seems like they tried way less hard than you did. <laughs> yeah. That's like, and, and that feels like what it would be with like, um, especially somebody like Sandy, like, uh, just, just cause it, yeah. it seems like luckily they, I had, yeah, <laughs> luckily I had that experience beforehand, <laughs> like where I lost, <laughs> I basically lost all my hopes and dreams and five blind to Stanley, but that was real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? So like, Oh, dude. Okay, I, I, I think that's how we end this. Like, like, tell that story, cause I. Uh... Well, I mean, that was just my first ever actual queuing record was five blind NAR. Yeah. Uh, that was also in 2017, I think. Or no, that was 2018. It was early 2018. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, I don't know. I've been going for that for a while. Oh, I totally got comps mixed up when I said that I missed five blind NAR at the 2017 PBQ UCLA. Okay. That wasn't actually the case, I don't think. Was it a year later? Uh, was it 2018 or what? Damn, I don't remember, actually. I'm bringing up your five blind now. You got NAR at Bay Area Speed Cuban uh, 2018. Before that, you had triple DNX yeah, at yeah, PBQ yeah. LA and Reno. And yeah, I had a hard time with five line for a while. Before that, but at Northwest, you got like an eight thirty, which I assume is like bad. I think it, I think it was that twenty seventeen PBQ UCLA that I I missed like a low five minute five line that would have been NAR, and I missed it by a slice, and so that was like, yeah, that was like one of the first times Damn. I was actually like really close to a record but then it was like all the way until that pbq or that uh yeah basque 2018 bay area speed cubing when i actually got five line nar um just because i had triple dnf so many freaking comps basically yeah dude this looks brutal uh, 
yeah five line official five line is brutal yeah it's still it still haunts me <laughs> um but yeah i finally got at that comp um after like close calls for literally a year and um yeah, got 451 NAR, my first ever record, and then six days later, Stanley beat it. Oh, and he, like, serious? crushed it. Holy crap. And, Dude, I'm uh, bringing up Stanley's WSA now. And and he just, like, took off with it after that, basically. Oh, my goodness. Um, and I basically enough. knew that was going to happen, because I knew all about, okay. like, his practice and his PBs and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Dude, another fun fact about Ashan, he gave me, like, multiple pep talks, because I was, like, kind of, like struggling to accept that like i had put all this time and effort and like gunning specifically for nar and i knew stanley was just about to like destroy me i'm like how do i come to terms with this you know and he had like already dealt with getting a world record and losing it and like trying to deal with the existential issues that raises yeah and so i don't quite remember the pep talk he gave me but he he was kind of like um I think part of what he said was like if Stanley gets way better than you, would you want him to have record? Like, would you want the better person to be to have that record? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, well, so what's the problem, basically? <laughs> um, Stop crying then. I'm like, really? I'm like yeah. yeah. I don't know if it helps, though. Yeah. But, I, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the problem there is not that Stanley has record. The problem is that Stanley's way better than you, right? Like, yeah that thing that hurts <laughs> yeah damn yeah i don't quite remember his pep talk but i think it helped a little yeah. bit yeah he also he also told me about how like this was before i really had ever talked to stanley much and i didn't know him very well and i remember ishan actually telling me like that he had talked to stanley a lot and that uh his like attitude towards grinding and getting records was like really kind of like pure attitude like that he wasn't focused on like getting the record specifically mm. and then mm. like that was kind of like a shallow goal and not the important part to him yeah. and so i don't know he gave me like part of the pep talk was like basically that like helped me believe like okay stanley's like someone i would be cool with having a record yeah, you know? it, yeah. it makes it a lot more palatable when the person who's destroying you is not like a <laughs> douchebag True. and uh <laughs> that's like that's like one of the things I've thought of with like uh if if Ro ever took my record, like I would feel way better about it than like some other people. <laughs> Is he gonna say yeah. a name? Do we be in the stream? I'm not gonna say anybody, but like I would be I'd be cool with Ro beating yeah, my record because yeah. he's a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. makes it feel way worse if it's uh someone you really some don't know, fan of mm. personality wise. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And so were you talking to Stanley much while he was grinding? Um, like, did you have much insight into his practice? Like, uh, not, I mean, I knew like his, when he was like getting certain PBs and yeah. his improvement generally, I, I specifically remember I was doing a live stream on YouTube. One of my like earlier interactions with Stanley was I was doing a live stream on YouTube and I was trying to do some five blind yeah. and I was like, improving a lot and i think i had just gotten like my first ever sub four and i was really stoked and then like um i got a sub four on that stream and then i shared the scramble and then stanley was like 327 pb single by 30 seconds or something (laughs) i was just like cool thanks dude like yeah great 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 slash band yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Oh my goodness. And then I think like literally on that same stream, like he was uh he like had got another PB, like a three twenty or something yeah. or three ten. And I was like, all right, yep. Like, oh my god, no, he's not like lying about this. Like I'm going to get destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> basically. Jesus. Cause I I mean you guys seem pretty seem like fairly tight now or like um... Yeah, yeah. That was like before we really started talking at all. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just murdered uh... my headphones. Oh. Got you, got you back on now okay yeah um we actually like met for the first time i think it was 2018 kind of like uh spring there was a 
It was Western Championship. Yeah, Western Championship 2018. Stanley went to that, and Mark did too. They both like traveled pretty far to go to that comp. That was also the first time I ever like actually talked to Mark a lot. Right. And I gave him a ride to the airport. That was cool. We talked a bunch. Yeah. Um, but I also talked to Stanley a bunch too, and that was like when he was starting to like make more friends in the Cuban community, which was cool. Right. And uh, he like partook in a big relay that we did and everything. Yes. Um, I think I've seen he... that relay. <laughs> okay, to be fair, I think I've seen was... all the relays. But... Yeah. As far as five line goes, that comp was interesting because I triple DNF'd, and, uh, but I had one attempt that was a 402, I think, and it would have been like a huge PR, um, and it would have been NAR by like quite a lot. I would have beaten Stanley's NAR. Stanley triple DNF'd, and his NAR was 439. We both, yeah, we both triple DNF'd. I had a 402 DNF by two twisted corners, and it was so stupid because I twisted a corner that wasn't twisted. Like, I memoed it as being twisted, and it wasn't, it was actually solved. And so I twisted a, like, I had a solved cube, and then I twisted a corner. Dude. And I got a 402 DNF. Dude. So, like, it probably would have been a sub four too. <laughs> Dude, so it, it wasn't that you twisted um, the wrong corner. You did a random ass two twist L got of nowhere. For some reason, I looked at a corner and I thought it was twisted. Yeah, so yeah I did an yeah. extra twist L. Oh my goodness! And yeah, what what what, what did Stanley DNF there? Like, was he in the running or you his, just, DN like... his DNFs were like I think he had like a three forty something okay. DNF. Okay, but I don't know if it was that close. It might have been. I don't remember honestly. It yeah, might have been close. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> That's brutal, so, dude. Oh my goodness. He was he was definitely better than me, but like that was the last time that was my last chance to ever have a five line record yeah. and I fucking blew it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. And uh I think North uh US Championship. US Nationals, that's what it's called. Oh, I've heard of that, yeah. I've heard of that competition. US Nationals happened like somewhat shortly after that, and Stanley got five line world record for the first time ever at yeah. US Nationals. 345. Yeah. I know this is just out of my head. Yeah. Um, and I and I massively choked there as well. I always choke official five lines. Damn, dude. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Man, okay. I think I think I need to release yeah, you we, to we the hung out a lot. We started this we like spin. We started oh, hanging out a lot more after that, and we you we like went to a bunch of comps yeah. and shared hotel rooms like a bunch of times ever since Sick. then. Basically, yeah, that was the beginning of a budding friendship. That's awesome. That's awesome, and it's kind of cool that it seems like because I I mean it seems like you went particularly after multi, and they kind of have stuck in the big blind region mostly. So you're like on parallel paths. Yeah, it yeah. feels like, yeah. It's funny because I think I do I do big blind a lot more than Stanley does multi, <laughs> but yeah, 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 kind of like that. Yeah. Do you feel like there's been any like, like cross pollination in terms of like he said stuff that's really helped your multi, or like you've said stuff that's helped his five blind, or has it just been like his big blind, mm -hmm. or has it just been like we both like suffering um, at a world class level? Uh... Is it just like a camaraderie thing? Hmm. I'm worried I'm gonna like forget something. I don't I can't think of anything that he particularly like taught me. He did he did try to help me with one passing four blind and getting better at that, but I never really got better at it. <laughs> Am I it's probably my own fault. Dude, have you have you seen out. you haven't seen my talk with Stanley, right? No, I didn't. Want you to. might. Yeah, I, I won't take it personally. Don't worry. Um, but you, uh, you might find the visualization aspect of that interesting. Or talking to him, it sounds like he has just very strong native visualization ability. I don't, have you talked to him about this at all? Like how uh, he visualizes I mean, his I've, memo. Visualizing specifically? No, I don't mm. think so. Because what? But I've talked to him specifically a lot about like, uh getting your brain more used to one passing like, yeah that seems like the, the important part you know and like practicing in a way to make your brain get used to it so like yeah. one thing he told me to try was like um like because one passing wings is like specifically the hardest part uh usually for from a perspective so from like, an amount of memo perspective or because wings suck to trace well just like if you just one pass 
you're most likely going to forget some part of wings right. most of the time. That's right. like usually where you struggle. Right. Uh, or at least I do probably most people. Um, and so he's like saying like, don't start by just going from two passing to one passing. Just uh, like review only the first letter pair of each image of wings or something or like, and then like slowly like cut down on what, how much stuff you're reviewing or like, start reviewing it like quicker or something you know like interesting just like don't just like don't, cold don't go yeah don't go straight from two to two whole passes to one single pass yeah yeah cut down like a little bit at a time until your brain gets used to it yeah and i kind of tried to do that but i don't know i don't know if it's like impatience or something but it's really also like super foreign thing to try to do and like maybe it's just like my habits are too ingrained that it feels like too much of a big thing to switch up in memo mm -hmm. that i'm like it's like it makes me go way slower like uh unproportionately way slower than it should and so it's almost like i'm not even practicing in the way i should be so it's really like hard to think interesting out, kind of interesting yeah the interesting the, the the closest analogy i feel like i could draw from my own experiencing is is going from like strong first pass to oh crap i want to ask you this um to like week two pass or something where you're just doing something very very foreign and trying to figure out if your brain can even adapt to it like yeah it's like you have to make that new thing that you're practicing that you don't even want to be like the habit eventually you have to make it a habit just to be able to practice it yeah yeah it's like do i want to do this yeah and is this like is this even going to be good or am i going to spend like a month of hard work developing a useless skill yeah like yeah 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 that's <laughs> the main fear usually yep sounds like my po grind um yeah. so because because uh like I, as I say this, hopefully it's clear that I'm not taking anything away from the serious grind Stanley has put in on four blind and five blind. Um, cause I, I mean, I haven't been there, but seeing how they, seeing their approach to stuff, they're like, they work really hard. But one of the things that really interested me as we spoke was him speaking about how effortlessly he can visualize, um, like that he was visualizing his memo until a really high level in three blind, like it, uh, averaging 18 seconds, he would visualize his memo and it, he doesn't feel like he loses any memo time by visualizing. And so, um, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I am my budding theory and, and I'm hoping him and I can chat again and I can throw questions like this at him is like, how much does that contribute to his ability to one pass? Because I don't, I don't think yeah, that yeah. it's, I don't think that it's compensating for a lack of work the the truly terrifying I mean, I like, thing yeah i feel like visualizing shouldn't be necessary i should say that like yeah it definitely shouldn't be necessary so yeah like it's kind of hard to say if that like contributes to his ability to do it well if it's like not even a thing you need to do you know what i mean but would it not make memo easier is my question like, probably yeah because that, that that's what i'm thinking is like if if you have the choice between like i agree that it's not necessary but if you have the choice between yeah. like having only conceptual memo and having conceptual plus visual memo and it takes the same amount of time like i would choose the latter and it's like does that redu either strengthen his memo or reduce his dnf rate to the point that it's like uh grinding it out is more tolerable for him or something or like yeah, I don't know. I also just like start thinking about how like another concept from Stanley is like I don't I don't know how he does this, but he can do like safe one pass, which is basically just like one passing slower. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have no idea how that would work cuz that just is going to make it so that a lot of the stuff you're one passing, you have to hold on for longer than normal. Yeah. So, have you read Moonwalking yeah, like, with Einstein? You can do that yeah yeah do you, do you remember at the start of the book it talks about that dude with syn with very severe synesthesia who just remembers everything because it's so strongly associated 
Uh, I don't. It's oh. been a long time since I read okay. that book. But so at 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 the start of the book, um, are we still? I think I have it right here. Sorry. <laughs> oh crap! We have visual aids. Yeah. Oh snap! In the flesh. Oh, I also have. The... Hey, another oh. thing. Is Sean got me to read? Yeah, uh, the inner dude. game. Apprentice. Dude, I'm I'm okay. I lie when I say I'm busy reading it. I read like the first three chapters and was like, "This is sick." I want to think about it and haven't touched it since. But I'm I'm genuinely keen to like just yeah. like try to try to rip on that and talk about how it applies to multi blind. Like that's one one so other sick. thing I guess I should mention about Ishan is like he had huge issues with comp nerves and like interesting specifically like hypo hyper hyperhide hyperhidrosis i think is what's called like sweating of your extremities oh, like, like and just really absurd amount yeah damn. like medically he was diagnosed with that damn but he he's like he was well known at least for like doing all these really really absurd ways of practicing like downloading a bunch of porno sounds and listening to it while doing three blind like That's trying cool. to find specifically like all these things that would distract him more than anything he could yeah, think of yeah and he also like bought a tarantula, I guess, or he was trying to figure out about buying a tarantula to put on his face while doing three blinds. Oh, right, so he didn't actually do this. I don't know if he ever ended up doing the tarantula thing, bro. We got it. He was like, out. he was oh, like goodness. trying to pull strings to get it to happen. <laughs> tarantula practice, yeah. yeah, dude, that is wild. That is absolutely wild. Yeah. Oh, my he was like, he was really hardcore about yeah. like specifically working on nerves yeah. and trying to like get rid of nerves and comps because there's a for a long time are you familiar with day nine i miss 95 percent likely no just want to check i don't know doesn't ring a bell yeah. so he's the he's a starcraft dude um he didn't end up getting oh this is from james and chat he didn't end up getting the tarantula because it would have been a risk for the tarantula if it or they fell uh true um, yeah, tarantula falls, it dies, basically, right? Wait, for real? I yeah, no I think idea. if a tarantula falls, falls like more than like a few inches, it like dies. Wow, That's some weird thing I heard. Clearly, evolution is we a myth. Can, we can um, fact check this. <laughs> damn. So day nine is a uh, okay. Wait. A very fragile, ex fragile exoskeleton. It's much like an eggshell. Wow. So if they basically if they fall on any part of their egg exoskeleton from like a tiny height, it'll probably die. Jesus, that sounds horrible. Okay. Yeah, he reached out Sean, to a tarantula guy on Craigslist, but couldn't get it going. Holy crap! <laughs> Got to bounce off under the yeah. stream. Peace out, James. Thanks for dropping the knowledge. James knows a lot about this. He's an OG. Dude. He knows all these people I was talking about. <laughs> Dude, that is wild. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Day Nine, yeah, yeah. Um, he knows a lot about it. He he is a StarCraft, like an ex StarCraft pro before StarCraft was before esports were really a thing, um, and he he just spoke about this is way less interesting than, than the tarantula thing. But he just spoke about how like a friend of his and and then he adopted it from them would just practice for tournaments in like as many different like ways as he could like turn the heat really high, turn the heat really low. Like, um, for you, it would probably be sense. tank the humidity, change the height of the chair, change the height of the desk, like just change as much Makes as you can. Sense. Yeah. It's a really smart way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if, if you can't, if you can't control the venue of where you're going to be doing all the competing, you need to be able to compete in any weird settings yeah. possible, basically, because yeah. you have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. And that's like something. You want to be picky about it when you're doing attempts at home because you want to get good results when you can. But mm. yeah, mm. there will be a lot of if if you haven't competed in multi blind officially that much, you will realize eventually there's always going to be some really annoying stuff about the comp. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. slippery tables, really cold air conditioning, kids making noise all over the place, people staring at you the entire time. <laughs> Some people don't even realize how weird it is to have a judge just staring at you yeah. during your whole yeah. attempt. God, that's Holy weird, crap. dude. Dude, my first multi attempt, I was going for a big eleven cubes, but like, I the fact that the judge was somebody I didn't know, it was like somebody's dad, um, freaked me out. Oh my goodness! I like start feeling bad. I have this like, <laughs> I don't know. 
I I have like a weird amount of like it's probably like something I should look into with a therapist, but like I care way too much about like bothering people. Right. You know? Like like uh like to an amount where it's like I'm being uh obsessive and I need to like stop doing this. Yeah. Because it's unhealthy probably. Damn. Like I I really like avoid doing a lot of certain things just so I'm not annoying to other people around me, you know? So have, and yeah. So when I see yeah, I basically I start like feeling bad for the judge who's there. And it's like hard for me to not think about it. I noticed. Like it, it the thought pops into my head over and over again yeah. that they must be so bored and like I feel bad that they have to do this. Yeah. You know? Have you have like you fault. like tried to get specific people to judge for you like in your bigger attempts like um sometimes but usually just if I'm like worried about getting a judge that doesn't know what they're doing or that's going to be distracting <laughs> or something like as I as I've gotten like better oftentimes the comps I go to I like know the people who are organizing yeah. like a lot of times you probably seen Ronza in my chat he's a delegate yes um he's a delegate and he would he's always like gone out of his way to like try to make sure that my okay. attempts are like nice and like go without a hitch and he'll like judge for me and stuff and okay. like he'll like scramble my cubes just because i like actually trust him to not duplicate scrambles and stuff you know crap dude and duplicate he, like, scrambles like, in like an official attempt God just seem like the worst yeah that sucks. feels like it would be <laughs> gg yeah, the other thing. yeah yeah Practice, practice at home, giving yourself a duplicate scramble on purpose. <laughs> Except you can't even really you, yeah. emulate the feeling yeah. of that because you know you have a dupe. Yeah, yeah. When it comes out of nowhere, it's so frustrating and distracting, and you have to like figure out what to do in the moment. Yeah, and yeah, because yeah. yeah, the the problem is like you um you need to call a delegate at that point, right? Or do you just finish the attempt and then say this was scrambled, like? There's not really the the worst part is there isn't really uh, there isn't a rig for a door guideline. Yeah, there's yeah, no guideline yeah. for what to do. It's so stupid. <laughs> I don't know how the WCA hasn't fixed that yet, but there's no like standard way to go about it. I've had comps where the delegates like, "Hey, you want to like give me an extra cube and I can scramble it with another scramble just in case there's a duplicate, you can just grab that uh, cube." Yeah. And I'm like I'm like is that like legal? Because I could just get a bad scramble and swap it with that one. It's most likely it's better, you know. Yeah. Like, cause, so like I would have to like show you the scramble before I switch it, right? Yeah. And they're like, well, no, you don't have to. We could just like check the video, I guess, if you end up doing it. So it's like, I don't know. None of this shit is like standard and makes any sense. It's really stupid. Dude, we should we should make Kit Clement proud and make a make a forum post about this. Yeah, I guess the problem is there's not much of a there's there's not much of a good solution yeah like uh the solution is to not get duplicate scrambles ever yeah yeah but you can't really do that and so like yeah what's the best way to deal with it when you do get a duplicate scramble who the hell knows would, would it, would it not just be I, just said. I, I mean for me i feel like it would be like tough luck you're doing one less cube like i i feel like the least distracting way to go about it for me personally would be like I realize yeah, it's yeah. a duplicate. Call a duplicate. Put it. That's, call a delegate. Put it over to the side. Move on with my life. Yeah, that is an option. You can just like, if you get a duplicate scramble, you can just toss that cube, and then you'll just it'll be as if you attempted that many cubes. Yeah. Without the duplicate scramble, yeah. which is still punishing the competitor for something that's not their fault. But yeah, whatever. It's it's that's definitely I would say the least distracting way to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's also only really an issue if you're, like, pushing a lot of cubes. If you're doing, like, a 10-cube attempt, you should have, like, theoretically, you have time to call a delegate and get them to take the 20 seconds to verify it's, if it's a duplicate or something. Like, yeah. Yeah, like... Well, yeah, I guess it depends if you're doing something that would be, like, cutting it close to the hour for you normally. Yeah. yeah. Shame. I should probably have more sympathy for people doing 10 cube official attempts because i'm just like well shame <laughs> you know they'll, yeah. they'll get over it um i mean <laughs> the time the time lost uh is not like as much of a run killer you know exactly uh exactly yeah but having 
if you're doing like 63 cubes or something and you have to freaking go get a delegate and like waste 20 seconds yeah that's, that's scary and, and then you and then you spend like the next minute being annoyed about it too it's yeah like, yeah that'll yeah. just destroy it basically that's the that's why i'm thinking you just like for me i feel like i would need to ha have a mental like i i know exactly what i'm doing in the situation this cube is going yeah. in the bin i'm taking the cube from you know my end cube is going there instead yeah. and i'm moving on with my life like five seconds yeah yeah the only problem with that for me at least would i'd just be annoyed still yeah yeah like i'd just be thinking somebody fucked up and now uh my attempt's gonna be worse yeah. great yeah literally <laughs> I have to do like ignore that yeah. yeah sorry i keep saying curse words it's hard to, oh dude hard i literally don't fun. care i literally don't care that's totally fine um okay <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to day nine. We never got we never got to the fifty and sixty thing. No, 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 no. I <laughs> I abandoned hope. By which I mean, uh, you might get another Discord message. Uh, bother bothering oh, yeah. me about a part two. Yeah, for sure. I'm down. Sweet, sweet. Damn, dude. Um, can you can I have three seconds to do a Doctor K and collect my thoughts? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, Yes, this, this is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just memeing it. There's no shot I'm going to focus now. <laughs> Man. Okay. Dude, I have freaking loved this. Um, I feel like we probably need to let you go sleep. Um, yeah, I'm getting a little tired. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's, it's only, look, it's only been three hours, dude. <laughs> you could have solved yeah, 180 cubes. Um, that's how it works. Dude, I, I would, uh, shame. I don't want to put you on the spot. I would, I would definitely be keen to, uh, to hear about the, the road to 50 and 60. I can, I can message you on discord and we can figure out if that would be a, a potential timeline in the future. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. Sweet. Um, any other mayo, Dr. K. Yeah. Chat knows Dr. K. Cool, man. Um, I have so freaking enjoyed this. Thank you for the time. It's been a, it, awesome to talk in real time as well um yeah it's good to it's fun to go down memory lane sometimes and uh refresh my my memory on what what happened yeah. it was all kind of jumbled and it's it's always interesting to see how your memory can differ from reality like which i i, I don't feel yeah. like you've had any massive disconnections from reality but it's yeah there's been a few few yeah. little ones yeah <laughs> and shout out to to past graham who put together this um multi blind improvement playlist which i think has been freaking invaluable in doing the detective yeah, work yeah. huge man. yeah yeah big stuff cool yeah any uh in, in any final words or shout outs or i don't know i don't know what podcast people do go follow sig on twitch people yeah follow me twitch.tv slash sig oh. <laughs> tell your mom tell your dad yeah like comment subscribe drop 50 gifted subs oh yeah there we go yeah in that, but like if somebody subscribe if somebody is genuinely in here and doesn't follow sigalig like all you get from me is budget sigalig you definitely should um yeah cool man we'll 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 let you go live your life thank you so much again for uh for coming on i uh, hope we get to do yeah. one of these in the future and, and you have yourself an awesome sleep yeah for sure all right good talk peace out man see you chat much love. Yeah. Hey, oh, we wide. RG wide now. What are we doing, chat? Damn. Potato, what's going on? Thanks, guys. That was great. Oh, thank you, Edna. That's very kind. Damn, you're up late, dude. You're up late. Roy7 indeed, sick. Thank you so much. Dude, I frick, man. That flew by. I had such a good time. Um, You? Yes, you. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, Ed Lad, Ed Lad. Thanks for sending this up. Love the stream. See you, RG and Graham. Sweet. Thank you so much, Ali. Peace out, dude. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll spend a little bit part two soon. I hope so. I hope so. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll chat to Sig and see if he can tolerate another one of these. Um, and if so, I think these kind of weekend vibes work well. Um, 
maybe like a week or two would be dope. Um, chat, we can hang out for a little bit. I won't lie to you. I'm at, my eyeballs are going to be floating soon. I need to go pee and then I'll, I'll see you in a second. What is up? What is up? How are we doing, Chad? How are we doing? I feel like we haven't... Uh, oh, let's disconnect that. Boom. Uh, what's the plan for the rest of Saturday streaming? Dude, Straw's a great question. I have no idea. Um, I have absolutely no idea. What's the time? So I have a bachelor's at um, 3 p.m. my time. I'm kind of keen to do a multi-attempt. Um, but I would probably need breakfast. Gave me a tour of your guys' base. When's Jupy going to be on the podcast? When she starts doing multi-blind, dude. When she starts doing multi-blind. I'm, uh, I'm ready for it. Jupy, what the hell? We were live for three hours? Welcome in, dude. It's good to see you. Um... Dude, I'm probably pretty keen to do some multi. Y'all talking about me? Yeah, the timing there was actually amazing. The timing there was actually amazing. Um, I probably need to get some food. I probably need to get some food. Um, how about just chatting? Ah, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll just bring ourselves towards ourselves. Um, if we like really need to, then we can. I want to I want to spend a second just like so. This is what I was drawing in the background. Um. Just figuring out if there's anything that I want to like pick up on. Um, also, if, oh my goodness, if anybody had any like particular highlights or like things they things they would be curious about uh, picking up on in a part two, feel free to shout. Um, shout what they are. I'm. Uh, I, I feel like I really really enjoyed like hearing particularly about like this 2017 section. Totally motivated for some blind after that. Yeah, literally, dude. So I'm I'm pretty sure we'll. Uh, I think my body's feeling okay. What I'd probably do is I'm gonna sleep because it's 127 a.m. Oh my goodness. Good night, RG and Chad. Peace out, potato. It sounds like you're in the same time zone as uh as Sig. Vicky gave me a tour of your guys' base. Shame, dude. Our base is everything good about our base is Vicky. Everything bad about our base is me. That's basically how it works. Is that a ray sub? Oh no. Dude, and I, I mean, like, the mental on some of this stuff just sounds absolutely brutal. Um, absolutely, absolutely brutal. Like, ooh. um, Like, some of these just so close, like, five blind DNFs. Um, like, missing NR by, like, a corner twist that you weren't even supposed to memo. Stuff like that would just kill me. I mean, I suppose there's a degree to which, like, we have... I'm thinking about it through the lens of being an SA, where we have even less competitions. But still, they do not they do not get a lot of, uh... Uh, do not get a lot of, like, multi-blind, particularly, like, big blind attempts out there. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, when did he start... Um... When did he start, like, really trying to push stuff? 21 cubes at Berkeley. It was, like, start of 2016 that he started multi. 
uh oh first multi blind was mid year 2016 so it was like six months to 20 cubes um and then what like a year to a year to about 25 to 30. Yo, sorry, I went to the bathroom. Dude, the, the nerve. <laughs> Going to the bathroom? Can you imagine? Not sure if you dressed me or something. Um, no, no you're, you're, you're good, Sig. You're good. We're just, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to, like, figure out if there was anything I wanted to ask about or, like, missed or, like, things I'd want to pick up on. Um, just trying to dump thoughts now. I'm so sorry, dude. Yeah, you better be, dude. You better be. No, dude, I just, I, I went off and did the freaking pee of my life. <sighs> Um, <laughs> the, the fact that Ishan was looking to get a tarantula is such a freaking highlight of that for me. Um, I'm really excited for like the mental game of multi-blind. I think that'll be like really interesting. Um, had to be so bad. <laughs> I'm so funny. Oh my goodness. Yeah, dude, I, if, if we go for that long again, we're going to need to work some breaks in. That's for damn sure. So, <sighs> mental game of multi-blind. I feel like there's like... Um, I, I'm just going to put this over here. Oh, we never... The synesthesia thing, dude. That's what I wanted to talk about. We never talked about synesthesia. Um, synesthesia, visualization. And one passing. This is, this is what I wanted to mention. Um, I don't have the energy to talk through the whole thing now. I probably actually need to... I think we'll do a multi-blind attempt maybe in the next hour, hour and a half. But I probably need to like go eat some food. Um, and shut up for a second. So... Mental game of multi is like how to practice the comps. Um, how to deal with comp nerves. Deal with comp nerves. Um, not putting your identity in. Putting your identity in achievement. Do I have synesthesia? No, I don't. I freaking wish I did. Um, but there's a there's a story in Moonwalking with Einstein, which is a book about um, competitive memory championships uh, or like m memory athletes that talks about synesthesia and its relationship to memory and like and then how memory is reinforced by images and senses and like memory palaces and that kind of stuff um but yeah i i won't i won't get too into this stuff now um not putting your identity in achievements um dealing with expectations and this actually, I, I would be super curious to like reflect on. So like, oops, material, material to reflect on would be, I, I would want to talk about uh, the inner game of tennis and which means I need to finish the damn book. And Dr. K's interview is simply which I feel like also touches on some really interesting, like competitive mindset flow type things. Then the expectations, um, okay, interview. And then this leads on to like, um, staying in the moment slash using a Tardana. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm sorry. I don't speak Hindi, I think. I think. Oh no, I'm not a person of the world. Um, recovering from distractions should probably go here. Recovering from distractions. Into the simply ties in with a lot of about mindset in the 50 to 60 cubes era. Interesting. Interesting. How much do you think, like, do you think mindset was a bigger part of pushing up to 60 than it was pushing up to 40 or has mindset just been a theme throughout? And yeah, do be, we, we, we basically, we basically like 
timeline or I was I was in the background busy timelining Sig's life more or less. Oh, there was that Ishan moment, dude. I want to find that Ishan moment. Because it's in I, I have you watched Chris Olsen's West Coast Cubing Tour? There's this moment with Ishan. Where would it be, dude? We're not going to talk about how many times I've watched this. Uh, is this it? Yes, this is it. This is it. Flex, J. Max, Chris. Is, is this Ishan? Is this Ishan over here? Words to the camera. This, I, I, I think this might be the moment you're talking about where he was trying to convince Felix that he should use the RUSU perm, uh, in, yeah, on big cubes. To the camera. Yeah, that's the Noah we know. <laughs> we have, uh, Felix, Jay, this is, Max, uh, Chris. This is, so they all think I'm insane. No, it's more I, revolutionary than magnets. I think this, <laughs> it's more revolutionary than magnets. The sideways U perm of S is like sub point eight average, and I, like, it's like important to learn. But they just keep laughing at me. So here is day one of my practice. And keep in mind, I have no turning experience on a 5x5. Five five. Uh, this is Graham's 5x5. Five five. He can do the Alec much better than me. Hey, dude, your 5x5 five five made it in. But, uh, you know, I have to take this task upon myself. So here we go. 0.83. All right. That is probably right. UWR single. 0.83. <laughs> That's so good, dude. That's so good. Did did you know that this was like recorded and on the internet, or is this the first time you're seeing it? Goodness, dude, Ishan seems so great. Man, my brain feels a bit melted. Might have seen that before, but forgot it existed. Makes sense. Ishan. World record orientation. Oh man. Oh wait, 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 are you talking about? Oh yeah, this is the world record fail, isn't it? I think it's literally right after. Damn, dude. Damn. I didn't realize there was such, um, yeah, row seven. I didn't realize there was such iconic cubing moments. Uh, oh, this, oh, this is Neil. Oh, sick. Dude, we, we got to watch a relay after that as well. Uh, oh, white red blind orientation. Oh, I get you. I get you. Uh, what are we going to find? I could never remember if it was Neil or Ishan who did all the, um, who, who did all the, the relays. Was this at Worlds? Oh, there's no Ishan in this then, right? Neil's channel, okay. Uh, Western, Western Champs? A person relay. No China Worlds. Yeah, they they were uh they were out of it by then. Oh, okay, wait a second. Uh, eight man three blind relay. Willis. Uh huh. No, dude, there's, there's the one they did at Western Champs. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. Oh, Nationals 2018. Okay, cool. Wait, wait. They're if they're like all on Neil's channel, we should just be able to see here. John deleted all the videos for his channel. Same for Max. Damn. A rip. Uh, oh wow, the dude puts out a few videos. Uh, no, that ain't it, that ain't it. Western Champs 2018, whoa, wait. Neil had a full blind NAR twice. Damn. 
full Stanley blew up. I feel like I saw them get in hard, one of the comps we looked at even. Nationals 2018. Uh, 8-man, 3-blind, relay. This is it. Right? Thumbnail. This first inning was like 207. Oh my goodness. All right, we got Max, we got Jake, we got Mark, we got Graham, we got Neil, we got Jeff, we got Aiden, and we got Ishan. The only one I don't know super well is Aiden. Oh, also, you, you actually had the timeline right. Going back memory lane, yeah, dude, I'm digging it. I mean, this is not even memory for me. This is mythology. Dude, this is a friggin' crew, hey. This is a pretty stacked lineup. Wait, let's locate this in time as well. Oh, we, we didn't... No, we, we didn't actually get to 2018. Oh. 14 memo. I'm about to roast people who are way faster than me. Oh, wait, you... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fringe, your stream is in the wrong. Where's my webcam, dude? There we go. Jeff gets a 14 or something? What the hell? A 32, dude, imagine. <laughs> I love the, like... <laughs> Like what? Holy crap. Max just looks like he's asleep, dude. <laughs> dude, you're just like what? Oh, the quality just jumped. I don't know how that happened, but it's probably a good thing. Dude, his execution looks so slow. But it's like... See what you mean about Neil's turning, dude. I see what you mean about Neil's turning. Yeah, there was some of the cleanest turning I've ever seen. That looks so good. It's so nerve-wracking. Dude, I... This would... Especially after Jeff gets a 14, I would, I would have soiled myself by now. Mark with the fumble. Oh man, Ishan's, uh, Ishan's starting, to, starting to pug out a little bit. Yeah, dude, Mark is doing finger tracing and everything. The, 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 it looks like he reviews here. Max is starting to wake up. What did he say there? Was he just like, go fast? Oh my goodness. Mark 46, dude, that's pretty safe. I respect that though, I respect that. I'm just... I'm just not gonna freaking DNF this. I'm not gonna be the reason we lose this. Jake's turning here also looks pretty safe. Oh my goodness, dude. The nerves for Max must be ridiculous. And he just... Everyone's like freaking out. <laughs> I freaking love this. It's just like yeah! <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's so good, dude. Imagine going last in DNA things, dude.
That would be just terror to me. Oh my goodness. Something about these relay tents is it's like US Nats. It's hot. Oh, of course, dude. Of course, because everybody's got events and stuff. That's wild. Do you know how many of these this took? I love how it's like everybody's using either the GTS 1 or the GTS 2. That is wild that everybody's using the same cube. That is so wild. 20 to 30 or something. Damn. This is so cool. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. It's so cool, especially as somebody, there were several different meetups throughout the weekend. It's so cool, especially as somebody who like only came in in 2019, like, and this stuff has only ever been, um, uh, this, this stuff has only ever been like mythology or like YouTube videos. It's so cool to get some of the context around it. Remember when Graham prayed God for a sub three minute relay? I have, uh, was that in the attempt we just watched? The, uh, that is, um, I do not remember. I do not remember. So weird. It's like ancient history. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Damn. This is, uh, this, this is, we're, we're being real cubing historians. It's talking to the one at worlds. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll watch one more. We'll watch one more. Uh, it's on Neil's channel, right? Graham's fault, I swear. <laughs> Dude, blame Sig. <laughs> oh my goodness, no sub three. This is this is pretty goaded though, right? Jack, Manuel, Liam, Jake, Juan Franco, Neil, Graham, and Jeff. Not bad. This is the one. Okay. Ah oh, damn, dude. I need to. Oh no, I don't. Where do they put the execution camera? There we go. I don't need to move my cam now. Jack has like such a signature way of like stopping the cube and removing his blindfold. Oh. Who's on the right here? Who was on the right there? I don't, I don't know a decent chunk of these people. Uh, When <laughs> Jack looks super quick, yeah, it's like, and he must hit the like, um, oh, they got sin. Oh, okay, okay, so he's not in this relay. So there were more people around the table, and then you were like changing who was in the crew. <laughs> I love the noises it makes. The simplest people still cycling through. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Was he using the top of the tag as a cube cover? That's so funny. Damn, Graham, we got edited out here. Ooh, that was pretty good. I love I love how the the time follows people's heads. That's really good. <laughs> also, have you seen Dukes' new haircut? It's so it's like it's so weird. I've never seen Dukes with short hair. It's so weird to me. <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway, this is the meme, right? That huge pause. And then is, is, is this the one where he goes, I blame Graham? Oh, it's Graham's fault, I swear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, is this what happened? Oh, he heard you snorting and thought you laughed. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Did you say I'm not laughing? It was a sniffle. Yeah. He's laughing. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I understand why he's blaming you now. Is Chris Mills in the background? He thought I laughed at him. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it makes so much sense now. <laughs> I love this. How does he even see under the blindfold? That's wild. It looks like a Tengen. Yeah, it's Tengen. <laughs> Dude! Oh, <laughs> that is such a freaking emotional roller coaster, dude. Uh, you started at like 3, I think it was 18, right? Because you started at 342. Dude, that is so brutal. That is so brutal. Oh my goodness. Wait, what was the thumbnail for this? Ah, uh, there's, 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 there's your face of shock. Nice. Neil literally took months to post this video because he spent so many hours doing the tracking in Adobe. Dude, oh my goodness. I would never. I would never. The big sticker trend. Wait, what's that? Me and Aji can do a two-person. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Genuinely, we need to do a... We need to do a two-person relay for AFR and that's going to be so easy because there's no AFR. And we're the only two people, to the best of our knowledge, in African countries. Um, <laughs> in, in an African country where there are two halfway decent blinders. It's going to be, like, impossible for any other country to get a better, uh, better two-person relay. <laughs> Chris Mills. Yeah, he's in New Zealand getting all the UK and ours right now. Dude, must be nice. Must be nice. Oh my goodness, chat. Okay. Like stickers that cover more of the plastic than regular stickers. Uh -huh, I get you. Okay. Okay. Chat, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little tired. I'm a little tired. I think what we're going to do, I'm probably going to take like an hour, uh, make a little bit of food. Actually sleeping now. Yeah. Good night, dude. Thanks so much again. It was, it was a vibe. It was a vibe. Walking down memory lane. Please do sleep well. I too, I'm going to go make some food. Um, and then I'm pretty keen to try to get in a, a multi attempt, hopefully in like an hour or so, 12 my time. We'll do either a 16 or 24 Cuba. I'll maybe try to sub hour 24, but because of the kind of issues, the physical issues we've had this week, I haven't had as much practice as I was hoping. So that may not happen. All right, but we'll see. Until then, I love you all. And let's go see. I think Dupes was streaming Celeste. I'm kind of down to rate him. Uh, kind of down to rate him. Ah, and it is, it is me streaming Cuban. Yeah, we'll, we'll write Dupes. Dupes is a homie. It's a chill guy to spend your time with on a Saturday. Um, yeah, Celeste is so cool. They're probably learning the speed run for it, or they're just playing through. I'm not sure. Either way, go tell, go tell them I send love and a uh, raid message. Sigil interview complete. Oh, wait, wait, not, not that one, not that one, not that one. I bought Sigil interview like this. Complete. Like that. Yeah, got it. Okay. Chat, peace and love to you all. Hopefully see you soon for a little bit of multi. Have great Saturdays. Sigaling interview. <laughs> Sigal interview? Were you interviewing Sigaling? The one and only? Seems a legend. Hope you interview him well. We're chatting, yeah, yeah. Was, was there a topic to the interview? I'm assuming it was QB related. Just knowing the nature of you guys' stream.